Pre-season's just such a, uh, it's a, such a tough time to get through and we've been focusing on um, tinkering our game plan a little bit, tinkering our list and the way we play. Uh, haven't even thought about September. And the Gold Coast were terrific tonight over the Tigers, winning by 18 points. I thought we were probably you know, a 6 out of 10. So we're just going to play a hell of a lot better than what we dished up tonight. I'm going for a beer, you bloke. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> they've been brave, haven't they? Yeah, no, they've, they've played a really good brand of footy today against a top side. Dimmer, do you still think the Tigers will play finals in 2014? Yeah, I do. I think 12 wins probably gets you in. We're probably not where the end we want to be, but you know we're capable of winning that. You know, 10 games to get us there. Richmond find themselves languishing in 16th position on the ladder. You know, we've got to make sure we take some steps and, and get our game back up and going, but unfortunately I've been saying this for probably six or seven weeks and I'm sick of, sick of talking about it. Unfortunately, we went one way with, with our game and, uh, and, and, and the game went the other way. You try new things and unfortunately you learn from your mistakes. Look, obviously we're pretty disappointed with his comments. We caught up with him this morning and removed his, uh, his foot from his mouth and my foot from his ass. so... <laughs> Come on, get out of the way. For the biggest haul of his career, Jack Prevold has 11. Uh, yeah, it's pretty emotional week, Baz. Uh, it's pretty devastated with how I came across. Another afternoon where the points end up with the opposition. The Dockers win. The Tigers, a disappointing afternoon. The Tigers are home by 44 points. And it's a horrendous kick. Basher Hurley. Basher can seal the deal. And he does. He was the guy that talked about the standards weren't right. They're right now. It'll be fitting if he can dot the goal. And the Tigers win six straight. And Mary Joyce is the cake. Unbelievable scenes here. Richmond are going to win their seventh consecutive game. resurgence it has been for the Tigers under Damien Hardwick in season 2014. At 3 and 10 they were dead and buried. Serious questions being asked. And now after seven straight wins they're back in control of the year and the equation is simple. Two more wins and the Tigers will play finals. Well the Saints they've endured a pretty wretched year themselves. They won their first two games of the season. They've won two of the following 18 matches. They sit last on the table but importantly a win today could go a long way towards ensuring they avoid the wooden spoon. Cam Mooney and Jared Healy, a lot of interest in this one as we await the Tigers to come out onto the ground. You can say it's a foregone conclusion, but we've seen funny results this year, and we've got one team that can win and get <laughs> off the bottom of the ladder. I suspect you'd rather finish second bottom than bottom. There's no such thing as a foregone conclusion. When you consider the Saints knocked off Frio, yep. we wait for the uh, for the uh, opening bounce and just find out what happens over the uh, ensuing two hours. But you can't deny that this has been one of the great turnaround stories of recent times. Uh, the Richmond Football Club were dead and buried, as Jason said, and now just two wins away from a finals campaign. Well, they were gone, Jared, weren't they? And I really do put on... You talk about the players who are barometers of the football club. I have a marriage for me. When he came back into this side, yeah. uh, he missed that first half through injury and they just couldn't quite get it going through the middle of the ground. He came back in. Deledio pushed forward. Martin pushed forward. And we just sits there. They've just gone on a roller coaster. It's been beautiful. It's amazing as well how many people are ready to jump on the bandwagon. I mean, it's like the whole football community wants Richmond in the finals because they just bring with them so much hype, so much what might be as we see them making their way up the tunnel to come onto the ground. They're currently sitting in 11th position on the ladder. But a win today and eighth spot is theirs. It is that simple. Of course, they'll probably need to beat Sydney next week to keep it. But today, a win, and they jump into the eight, Jerry. That's right. It's uh, been a great turnaround story. Trent Cotchin, you saw there, leading them out. Uh, he also was under some scrutiny the last time that these two sides played. And he led from the front, kicked four goals. Uh, really 
did uh, put on a magnificent show and he needs to do it again like the rest of the midfield to take it up to the Saints to get this game in control early in the piece and just uh, brutally deal with the Saints who are just two weeks away from their season ending. Well, it's a couple of those guys there we just saw, Deledio and Ellis. I mean, this guy's just gone through the roof with his ability, so can't wait for these guys. Here are the stories of the game uh, and it has been quick ball movement from the back line for the Tigers. It's been the story of their comeback, really. Their seven wins have been built on excellent ball movement, really quick ball movement. Delidio, I know you're going to talk about this later, Moons, yep. but him inside the forward 50 has uh, transformed his season and with uh, no Dustin Martin, really important. And there's a lot of stake particularly Christmas party bragging rights for the Rewalls. Well, we look at uh, Nick there. He's kicked 47 goals this year and Jack's kicked 48. So the big bragging rights coming up, Jace, at the end of the year. Who can get the most goals? Oh, it's going to be a beauty, of course. Game number 150 we saw on the banner for Tiger. Shane Edwards set for a great game here at the MCG and two of the best to call all the action this afternoon. It's Sandy Roberts and Anthony Hudson. Yes, thank you very much, Jason. Really looking forward to what should be a fantastic afternoon here. It's an overcast day. The lights are on already, but they're already Hutto letting fly with the yellow and black. Oh, the Tiger Army are here. I don't think there's that many Saints fans, to be to be honest, on this cold afternoon. But look at the Tiger lineup. Yeah, a pretty settled lineup. Unfortunately, they've lost Dustin Martin with that hamstring during the week. But apart from that, it's a big day for Shane Edwards, who's playing his 150th. Reese Conker is back in the lineup as well. So. He'll be very happy to be back in the side after his indiscretion. What about the Saints? Murdoch is the sub. There's three changes from last week. Jones gets another chance. He could be still playing for his career. Murdoch, as I said, the sub. And Spencer White will make his debut. The young man, it's been a big wait for Saints fans to see this young man make his debut. He was recruited at pick 25, as you can see. He was a Spotswood boy, uh, the Western Jets under 18s. He was finally presented with uh, his jumper before the game. Uh, and he gets his opportunity. And the reason has been such attention and a watch on him. He was compared to Buddy Franklin oh, as a kid. Not that he was as good as Buddy, <laughs> but he could do this. Oh. This is April last year in the VFL, Sandy, so talk about a wait to see that sort of stuff. Four bounces with the left hand and he just pops it through. Beautiful. I wonder if we're going to see any of that this afternoon. Well, let's hope so. And there he is just going through his final warm-up. What number has he got, Sandy? Loping left footer, wearing the number 23. And here's one of the greats of Punt Road, Neville Crow, who sadly is having a tough time health-wise at the moment he could be regarded as one of the most unluckiest players in the game to miss the 67 grand final but we certainly wish him well we're going to take a break and then we're all aboard the tiger train take on the saints if they could win today and then upset the swans next week and they could well be back here for september action cameron mooney knows all about september action he's won three flags one with North, two with the Cats, and I'm sure you're looking forward to it, Moons. I am, Hutto, and it is just a little bit overcast, as we know. The rain is staying away at the moment. Now, we know Dusty Martin's been a late withdrawal with Reese Conker coming in, so I want to concentrate on Brett Delidio today and just show what he's been doing. Now, he's heat maps over the last two years. Now, this is 2013. We're just seeing a lot of his ball down in the back half. They're going left to right the screen here, not getting too much in that forward half, only kicking the 10 goals last year. But this is what he's been doing this year, getting forward a little bit more, or a lot more. And we're just seeing he's all over the ground. Now, we see last week against Adelaide where he had an absolute belting game kicked two goals for six shots on goal from the midfield half forward line spending so much more time through that forward half of the park and then this is the meters game from round one to 14 now we know he had a bit of an injury missed a couple of games only averaging the 370 meters but since then guys going through the roof 524 meters they need to get the ball in this guy's hand forward of center he will kick your goals today Richmond won the toss thank you Moons Well, they're hoping to. <laughs> and they do. <laughs> it's a and they're kicking to the city and it's a great omen, isn't it? Oh, dear. So, ah. first blood to Trent Cotchen. Sandy, who's going to win the game? You just told us who won the toss, so... I'm oh, not predicting an upset. Not predicting an upset. What, 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 I mean, you talk about Richmond, they have disappointed their fans at times, not in the last seven weeks, but... They just have to, they can't get ahead of themselves, Jason. What do they need to do early in this game? Oh, look, stick to the basics. Don't think that they can play fancy football. And uh, I'm sure Damien Hardwick and the, the senior core players are well aware of what's got them into this position over the last seven weeks. They won't be mucking around. It is just attack the footy, attack the footy, and then attack the footy. Well, they're going for eight straight. Their record is 12 on the trot. That was back in 1932 and the 33 seasons. 
but uh, just take it one game at a time. As Jason said earlier, the equation is quite simple for Richmond as far as the season finals are concerned. They must just keep winning. For the Saints, they're staring down the barrel of a wooden spoon. What has been a tough year. Tried a number of new players with new coach Alan Richardson. And there's still a long way to go. David Armitage, Adam Schneider, the senior men, or some of the senior men of the Saints. Only four St Kilda players have played every game this year, Sandy. So yeah. they've been decimated by injuries, particularly now late in the year. I think there's 13 players that are gone for the season, given there's only two more weeks remaining, including today. There's a good look at Spencer White wearing the number 23 jumper. We wish him well in his first game. So here we go. Rich Stanley staying in the uh, goal square and uh, Nick Rewald up at the centre half forward position. Is the Tiger train set to rumble on? Whoa. Billy Long has got a big job against Marich. Marich tried to get it out, but against the Saints who go up towards half forward, only to see it chopped off. Tigers starting this game as warm favourites. Ellis has been a very good player this season. Chaplin's got it on half back. He looks up towards centre wing. Tigers just taking it very, very steady. Greg Short, that's OK. Up towards left half forward. Delaney on Jack Rewald. And big, Fisher on Griffiths. Big job for Delaney. There's the fly. Shenton, who's a really hard worker, hits the boundary line up against Edwards in his 150th. It's deliberate, so the 150 gamer gets the free kick, goes in towards Rewald. And Jack Rewald takes the mark. 30 out, but on a tight angle, let's go to test him. Positive start by the Tigers there. Disposal excellent. Their spread is uh, pretty significant across the right across the park. They look in sync early in the piece. They just need this goal to go through. 58 goals, 33 last year. So far this year, 48 33. It's on its way. It's a mighty start. They're continuing on their way. The Tigers get the first. You couldn't ask much more, could you? Jack Rebelt to get an early touch. That's what the Tigers want. They want to get all their key players up and about. That's just uh, not really uh, subtle at all from Cameron Shenton. And leading straight up at the man with the ball. Tight angle, but quality players. It's all about the conversion. They make the most of their opportunities. And that's what Jack Revolt's done. Made it look easy. I think every player has experienced a time in their career where there are some parts of a season, Jason, and you would have experienced more than others, where the whole side is just uh, working in unison, where you're not thinking about things. You are just doing things through habit. And that's where the Tigers have been the last few weeks. Revolt averages three and a half goals against the Saints in ten matches. Again, they've given the ball back too easily. Newman streaming through the middle. It's over Revolt's head. Oh, a push. And over Griffiths' head. No whistle. Gets another opportunity. Griffiths oh, and right. takes okay. it. And... Oh. 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 <laughs> what a start. <laughs> Faultless. Yeah. Well, he spoke about getting your key players involved. You've got two key forwards in Revolt and Griffiths. They both get an early touch and kick a spectacular goal apiece from tight angles. Yeah, one was the uh, Stevie J curve and the other the good old-fashioned boomerang. They're kicking them from all angles, but it was a speed of uh, ball movement through the centre. It was a quick hard ball get, then a nice uh, deft handball and quick ball movement into the forward line has set up the opportunities. Miles to Newman out of the middle, and Miles has been a revelation since coming into the side. So a brilliant start by the Tigers. Two on the board and the Saints haven't blinked. Marich to go again with Longer. It's a bounce that gives Marich a chance to run at the ball. Stephen again gets the hand pass away to Montagna. Penetrating kick down the boards, half forward, but again, they go able to chop it off, and it's Chaplin and Clo doing the work at half back, down towards, well, almost to the wing now with another kick, but it's not going to go that way. He's going to go laterally and come back from whence it came. Chaplin at full back. Basher Hurley's a target, and he's got in. Hooley just chipping with that left foot goes over the top to Grimes. Grimes gets around Nick Rewalt with relative ease, then spears it in towards Edward, but chipping in to take the mark, and it's a good one too, as Nathan Wright. 
Gets it off to Fisher, who's oh. lets them down by kicking it straight back to Chaplin. Yeah, we spoke about service, and they need to look after their forwards, and Nick Revolt's had a tough year in that respect. Oh, oh that's oh. pushing the line to Lydia. He escapes Montagna, strolls in for another for the oh. Tigers. Everything working in unison. Absolutely fantastic football. I'm not sure whether Delidio got away with one there, bouncing the ball. There's a fingernail away from being held while bouncing it, wasn't but it? Let's hope it wasn't because it would rob us of one of the, the most exciting goals that we've seen. This is just good play. Again, they all know where they're heading and every disposal is hitting a target. What they, a start. They elect to go down the middle as well, which uh, is just... The easiest way home we know, but this was uh, goal. He actually, he didn't really impede him at any stage, and he had to do that, Joe Montagna. Great goal from Delidio. Add that to the heat map. So three in four minutes. Out of the middle again. Who can take it? Tigers are away. Look at this. A Morris hand pass is OK. They're like a machine at the moment. Newman's been very good, bouncing off half-back down towards Miles. Miles Marks, 75 from home, goes with a big bomb. Rewalt couldn't get a fly. Fisher gets a fist to it, pushed towards the line. There's a decent old shove out by Lenny Hayes. The umpire lets it go, and maybe they'll get out of trouble. Down towards half back where Miles seizes over the line in front of Jones. Jason, they've got to get their forward uh, pressure up a little bit, the Saints. All the goals for the Tigers have been rebounded off that half back line. The thing they've got to do, Jared, is get their hands on the footballs. 25 possessions to 10. Five to two inside 50s. He's going to get a little bit of the prune. Foley does just that for the Tigers. Back to Cochin and Delidio. And they're inside again. Hurried kick Pennard. Onto the line. Oh, oh he's gone. Has he Griffiths? Not no. paid. <laughs> Drag him. It's the first mistake a Tigers made. <laughs> get him off the ground, Sandy. <laughs> oh, he had plenty of it too. But it did just ground out. Good decision. Stumped away by Fisher. Back towards the line, and Griggs sees it over. Frantic start for the Tigers. Morris has got Snyder oh, at the other end of the ground. There's not many at the other end of the ground at the moment, Jared, <laughs> is there? They're all up around the ball. Saints trying to make it more difficult. Clint Jones jammed it on the boot. And Tagner. I love it. We're not going any further just Thanks, yet. Guys. Good tackle. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. 30 out from the Tigers yeah, scoring zone. Here. It's fine. Fisher is one of the flyers. Jones back in the lineup. Gets it away now. An opportunity for right to clear. Goes towards half back. Getting a hand to it, but a hand only was Jake Batchelor in his 50th game. So a Throw in almost down to the wing. Longer again. Hayes couldn't take it. Shenton almost threw it out. Sam Gilbert's just dropped into the pocket in defence, loose in the defensive 50. After six or seven minutes. Rance now. Up towards Hooley. Eyes on the ball. He got thumped. And he only had eyes for the ball. It was fair. Hand pass is shot out. Chance here for Dempster. Goes up towards centre wing. Luck's a fortune because Rewalt with three back. He's going to lose it now, though. Hurley takes it from Newman. Gives it away and can get it back again in the middle. Bash is still going. Laterally to the outer side of the ground. they got runners out wide. Grigg is one of them. Spears in the pass. No mark taken there by Delidio. Door opens for Montagna. Joey's hand pass is OK over the top towards Ross. Couldn't handle it cleanly initially, but he shrugs the tackle. Well done by Ross. Gets up towards Rewalt. He's bowled, and the ball finishes over the line. Just in the Saints attacking zone, which has been a rarity. Let's have a look at Basha Hurley. It looks like he's taken the chest mark. Dempster coming through. Knocks it loose. It's a solid bump. You just see the, the, the frustration on Nick Rewalt's face as well. He just wants a, a ball that can actually hit him on the full. Well, he had one uh, in his hands and uh, delivered the handball. Shane Edwards, uh, in a celebratory game for him, he got a hand on it, which created the rebound. Jones works the handball back, but uh, nothing positive now. That, that movement forward is better. Shenton can take it from half-back in search of Revolt. He creeps out the back. Rance 
He's got the duty as we expected. Works it back to Batchelor. Some advantage will be paid and taken. Batchelor taking his time. Eventually a scrappy looking kick, but gets it to the intended target. Foster moved it forward, and here's Hooley. It's deep. They're going to hold their ground. Gordon thumped it away. And the Saints through Weller and then Stephen. Weller doing Dexter. pretty well at the moment on Koch, and he's attacking the ball as well, but they've got to lock down on Basher Hurley. He is just having a picnic across that half back line. Down the line for Curran. They judged it pretty well. Got to deal with two Tigers here. Good hands. And under the circumstances, Oops. did about as well as he could have, but Nunes unfortunately was frozen. And the free kick is going the Tigers' way. And no one in support, and almost resigned himself to being wrapped up then. Yep. Gang tackle. Leading the way was Chris Newman. Back pedals. Towards Chaplin, goes into Ellis. Another one who's had a fine season. Put a bit of pressure on Miles there for that one. Miles is equal to the task, although Rewalt took him high. Mm, would have been a throw otherwise. It was high. Ooh. Might have got one in the throat no. when he looks at it. No, I'm clown. Let's keep an eye on Nick no. Rewalt. Obviously no, no, no. showing a little discomfort at the moment. But Ellis has the football. He can come wide to Chaplin. He does. They've got loose players. Could have gone wide, but elect to go in the middle. This is just all too easy at the moment as Grimes drift down towards Conker. He's still not right, Revolt. He's still in the hands of the trainers. Conker down the line, but he's gone outside the line, has he? Yes, he has. Touched on the line by Billy Longett, so we've got a throw in in the Tigers' right forward pocket. Oh. Yeah, he does get the high fiend right in the throat. That should have been a free kick the other way. Well, it was almost simultaneously, wasn't it, the high contact? Shenton gets it away. Hurried kick by Armitage. Poor kick. Poor kick. And just it was a hit and hope. And Batchelor is the man who's taken the mark. Nine inside fifties to two at the present time. And the Saints are in a hell of a hole early in the match. Just quick kicks out of the uh, deep back line, going to a nice wall of defensive players set up. The Tigers are having a picnic at the moment. Well, he's celebrating his 50th game, but he's only kicked two goals in his career. A stammering approach. He kicks from 51. The way they're playing at the moment, they will put it straight through the middle. And he does. Tigers get their fourth in 11 and a half minutes of play. It was just a one-sided contest at the moment. Richmond's controlling the footy. 55 to 30, the overall possessions. But look at the marks. 22 to 2. 41 to 16 uncontested possessions so they're just getting no pressure they're able to use the footies they like and then when the when uh, the saints do get it we're seeing errors like that st kilda kicking at 27 percent efficiency as opposed to richmond's 86. now stand by tiger fans <laughs> we've got something for you a live ladder and oh. have a look at that <laughs> richmond in eighth position and that's where they will be tonight if they continue on the way they're going. We'll keep an eye on the percentage as well. It would take a, an absolute massive win for it to really be meaningful. It's more about getting the two victories, but if they have a, a huge win, then it might come into play next week if they were to lose against the Swans. Bree Stanley into the ruck. Lenny Hayes battling his guts out in the last time in his career at the MCG. He's got uh, Reese Conker as an opponent, and he comes up with a footy again. He's had a couple of times he could have had a free against him, Lenny, so I wonder if the edict's gone out to the umpires that can't pay a free against Lenny in his last game at the MCG. Snyder. Vantage pay. Now, the Saints need to go forward in a meaningful way. Billy Long is at full forward. Revolt's still out there. He's going to come into your picture right now. Strong hands. Takes the mark in front of Rance. Spencer White's down in the goal square. The debutant. There he is. But Revolt's you know, had a different action plan. Went for Stanley. Comes off to Snyder, but suddenly it's the Tigers surging oh, again. It. Newman, there's absolutely nothing ahead for him, so he's forced just to tread water oh. and hold up. And he's got the advantage of the whistle. I was just watching Jack uh, Rewald. He didn't break and spread enough for Newman. He was looking for him to get away from his opponent. 
You're right, Jody. He wanted that little cheap, easy one just at the side, didn't he? He didn't want to work, really push hard forward and spread those numbers out through that midfield. Yeah, Delaware. Newman was looking for the one into the space. He's ended up with it, which is uh, not surprising because the resistance from St Kilda right now is bordering on zero. But I think just looking down the track to uh, next week when they're taking on a more significant defence, Moons, they need to just address what happens if this happens. What happened? We saw, and plus we saw Newman. He didn't have that option, so he had to run into traffic. If the forwards all take off inside 50, Jace, what that does that do? That just opens up that middle of the field yep. for them to keep running. That's the little things that Jack just doesn't quite do well enough, I think. This is for his 50th goal of the season, and it's been a tumultuous one for him. But it's all coming together at the right time of the year. Jack Revolt, second of the afternoon. And the man who almost embodies Punt Road, the highs and the lows. He ended up at the train station, I think without a ticket at one stage, <laughs> trying to get through to escape the media when it was all going wrong for him. But when he's hot, he's such a pivotal part. And tell us what he's doing here, Jason, the com can. Oh, he's making it look nice and easy, isn't he? Uh, if you've got uninterrupted service coming from further afield, you'll find that a forward wants to work into the space anywhere he can get the footy they'll look to give it to him because he's got that confidence up about his conversion as well but just further to what moons was saying before i reckon one of the hardest things for players to do these days and one of the hardest things particularly for forwards is to run hard when you know deep down you're probably not going to get the ball you've got to sacrifice yourself for teammates so stanley having a run as we've heard he wins it out it goes straight to Greg Hooley's had an absolute field day Foley gets the hand pass away to Newman he's been busy as well uh, Miles just a battering ram and they keep going now the Tigers this is Gordon in towards full forward once again the whistle is sounded and there's a free kick going against Rewalt who's back back looking at his hands back. in the air as if to say what did I do wrong that was brilliant football by miles he was under enormous pressure yeah. and he still kept steely eyes on the ball and delivered a excellent handball ray short to nunes then another short one to dempster you've got to worry about the saints lack of competitiveness at the moment they've had half the possessions that the tigers have had and yet richmond lead the tackle six to five that means they are not prepared to work hard they only played once at the mcg this year they were absolutely smashed by hawthorne by 145 points yeah, and they kicked four goals in that game, Hutto. So they've kicked four goals for the year at the MCG. Yeah, their best performances have been at Etihad, there's no doubt. They've, they've yeah. kept a few beltings there as well, but they've had their four victories all at Etihad. They're eight games away from Etihad, an average losing margin of 65 points. Wow. Big pack at centre wing. Marich tries to edge it out, and he did well. Grimes comes inboard to Vlosten. Vlosten goes laterally. Interesting kick. But they're going to get away with it. They're taken across half back there by Gordon. That's a poor one. Tigers have been pretty lucky uh, with the umpires. Well, not lucky, but uh, they've received the most free kicks in the entire competition. They average something like 18.3 a game. But now the Saints have an opportunity to kick their first score. 17 plus minutes played in the quarter. And Shenton is going to have a shot. And we saw Nathan Gordon, he uh, made a blue and he's uh, devastated and dirty on himself, but there's not a footballer in uh, the game, past or present, that hasn't done something like that early in the match. But the challenge is, you just got to put it behind you. Former Redleg in the South Australian League, Shenton has kicked a couple coming into this game for the year. Uh, he's off target and kicks it behind. He got away with it, so they haven't scored. His final's uh, potentially on offer for young Gordon, so... He wants just to get his chin up and get on with it. Nice fly from Revolt, but no mark, so good to fight defence. The ball suddenly slapped forward about to 35 to 40 metres. And whilst the re resistance, Jason, at the moment is pretty average, you cannot take anything away from just how slick the Tigers are. And yep. A lot of people are already uh, suggesting that the Swans turn up and play their best. Well, then uh, the Tigers no chance. But based on this level of performance, they are red hot at the moment. And they were competitive uh, against Sydney last time. They copped yep. a lot of criticism, but they were in the match. The game cop criticism, didn't it? It was the uh, yep. height of the rolling ball. Margin 29. Seven and a half to go in this opening turn. It's been a feast already for Tiger fans. Will that continue? Armitage and Miles go to battle. Hayes, a hand pass. Armitage. Better play. 
Got it moving to Jones. Kept them guessing, and then he drills it onto the chest. And the young man, Spencer White, has taken his first mark, and there's his left foot kick. It's a pretty safe place to go into the middle of Revolt. He's got the captain, and he's chipped it wide. And effectively for Snyder, there's a bit of grass involved in that, but it's been paid. That's well, that the... was, a, uh, was a clever kick from Spencer White. He spotted Nick Revolt in space one-on-one -on -one and just kicked it to his side of the contest. And uh, Nick nearly took the contested mark, but was able to maintain possession. So smart use of the footy when there was a lot of traffic around the 50-metre area. I was going to say the same about Nick Rewald's kick. To me, it was the perfect kick for a forward. It just had enough height and allowed Snyder to actually dictate with his speed the point at which he was going to intercept the football. Don't have to be bullets. And 20 disposals last week against the Swans. This is for his career 250th goal. The Saints need a goal. Snyder started that way right. And that's where it stays. Richmond five straight 30. St Kilda two behinds. Six to go in the opening turn. He does look like an athlete, oh, Jason Spencer White. Good call, cool umpire. It was about eight metres. Seven goals, nine to Schneider. Farron Ray keeps the ball in play. Opportunity for Dempster, but he's immediately gang tackled by about three Tigers. And they're just mauling him. And we just saw Trent Cotchin getting flung out of the contest from behind. He put his hands out. It was a uh, 7.3 from the Russian judge. <laughs> but it was uh, in, a, in a week where the tagger has been highlighted again. He needs some protection. Ellis gets a hurried kick. It's probably seven or eight metres. Edwards has his feet taken out from underneath him. Delidio went through but lost the footy. Waiting for out the back is Ray. Gives it away quickly to Gilbert, who goes onto that left foot, but it's not a good kick once again. His target was Rewalt. The mark wasn't held by Grigg, however. Doesn't matter. They've got runners streaming down the ground. One is Grimes, and he just pushes the ball along in front of him. Gets a favourable bounce, and he's away. Looks down towards the forward line. A little left foot chip in towards the 50. Beautifully done. They'll play on now to Rewalt. See what you can do here. And he goes short to Merringer. Kicks the goal. Sensational play by the Tigers. What you might call a team goal. Ah, oh, brilliant it was, Sandy. Grimes has been magnificent across the half-back line. It's as good as football as I've seen him play. He's had lots of injuries. We've known he's a talented youngster, but that passage of play was one of the highlights of his career to date. Even their mistakes are turning into goals here, Jason. Merrick drops the ball, and he turns it into a drop kick. And they're playing party football at the moment, yeah. Richmond, and then... You know, and it's hard to see anything changing at the moment because of the lack of pressure being applied by the Saints. They need some players to stand up, actually grit their teeth, hit a couple of contests hard, either win the ball or take the player that's got the ball from the opposition. But at the moment, it's just far too easy going from one end to the other. You're confident he got a boot on that item? I think he did. Stephen with the exit out of the middle. And a direct one here is Spencer White with an opportunity. The gasps from the Saints fans. They're desperately hoping there. And now the Tigers, quick to pounce on any mistake, aren't they? Chock full of confidence, although that's not the greatest kick in the world. How many more games are we seeing from Chris Newman at the MCG, Jason? That's a very good question. We were talking about that pre-game. Could well be his last. You never know. You don't know. But he has been a fantastic player for the Richmond football. Yeah. Jack Stephen getting plenty of it early. His seventh disposal. On the chest of Nick Revolt. The Saints have been a little bit more competitive in the last well, 10 minutes, but uh, when Richmond have got the ball, they've just been able to speed it down the other end. And so, they've got to hit the scoreboard, St Kilda. That's not going to do the job. It was touched, but they're happy to play on. And right now, that is their mantra. They're using it so cleanly. Great smother. Some good pressure, and the smother was... Excellent from Wright. That might be holding the man. It was certainly pushing it. Wright Shenton has kicked one behind. They need a goal. And Shenton steps up. The Saints are on the board in a major way. I reckon he was a little stiff, Ricky Pettit, because he clearly got the hand pass away. Sometimes the umpires know that if you're handballing it to yourself, they give the tackle a little bit more latitude. So it was a terrific smother first up from Nathan Wright. And then he gets up. He goes again and uh, he tackles Petter to the ground, gets up, gets the ball to Shenton. And he missed a set shot moments ago. He doesn't miss this time. They'll take it anywhere they can get it at the moment, the Saints. Why historically hasn't that been paid as a free kick? I think if you just handballed it to, to yourself, yourself yeah. 
Well, then the umpire said you're still in control of the ball. Fair enough. But that was a few metres past him. Yeah. I, I think he was stiff not to get the free kick better. Four minutes remaining. Stanley wins it out of the middle, almost thumps it down towards half forward, but that's where it ends. And the combine, combination of handballs allows Pettit to get another kick, this time towards Greek. He's on centre wing, can just drift play into Cochin in the middle. Runs one towards Batchelor. Well, the kick had to be good to Newman. It was absolutely perfect. Batch is alone on the outer side. He might have a problem because no one's going near him. Hurley goes long. Not a well-directed kick, however, on this occasion. And Chips Fisher has taken over the line with the ball. Yeah, it was well read by Sam Fisher. Hurley elected to go ignore the shorter options, looking for Jack Rewald, the longer option, and Fisher read it magnificently. Stanley again with Griffiths. Griffiths got a left hand to it. A little bit of aerial ping-pong as Ray gets it away to Montagna. Shenton again. He's surrounded by the yellow and black. He tries to go back to Montagna. Hayes nips in. Does the old fend-off a la Dustin Martin and has taken Great. over the line. Then his last home game. Chris, Chris. Fabulous career coming to an end. 296 oh, no, no, no. games to his credit. Yeah, so close. We'll bow out at the Adelaide Oval next week. And I'm sure you'll get a great reception there as well. Thumped away by Montagna. Taken by Flostone. Quickly moved it on. Yeah, yeah, Rawley yeah, gets yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah. Bachelor. Delidio. The onus was on him to move it on. Seb Ross. Just chips it out for Spencer White. He was committed, but so are the Tigers. Got to Armitage. Into the middle where Ray was oh, waiting. And if they're clean, they should be able to score. It should be able to score four points, but that wasn't clean. Oh. Oh, Made Reba had to really labour for it. His left boot. Oh, he's going to get a free. Oh. Downfield. Down Surely that was at the time he kicked it. Well, he got away with on there, Nick Reba. I think it was a great decision oh, back, back, back. to go on to the left foot. He had some support defensively. Let's see what happens here. He's kicked and then he's pushed. And that's, that's in slow motion. Call. That's in slow motion. I like to see it in normal speed. I'll tell you what, Rebolt was almost the closest to it. It was a poor kick from, I think it was a Ray in the middle of the ground. Yeah. He's open running towards goal and he kicked it. The defensive side of him on the bounce made him have to pull up and took away the advantage that they had. Has anyone ever got to take their own kick downfield before? Yes. Robert Dibier Domenico. <laughs> Here's Fisher for the Saints second. And he's threaded it through. So they've hit back a bit here, St Kilda. Back to 22 points. Well, as you said, hello, a good couple of uh, minutes for the Saints. Here's the real time. We see it in real time. That's, that's the poor kick. That yeah. needed to be almost over the head of Rebel so he could run onto it. Gee, Gee that doesn't look late in real time. No, it does to me. That's yeah. a free kick down the You're ground. You're a cranky old man, Jerry. <laughs> no, that's just a fair call. I mean, the umpires get it right occasionally, Jason. I've never heard you say they got it right in 10 years of footy. I, I, I'm not an umpire bash by any stretch, but when you're giving everything you can to try and put pressure on the bloke with the ball, and just as it's leaving his boot, you're pushing him, I think a downfield free kick's hard. Well, was it a free or not a free? OK, you two. Let's I've got go no back problem the with middle. the free kick being paid where it actually happened, not downfield. That's the only, only thing I had issue with. Hayes grappling for it in the middle with Miles. Straight back here, straight back here. Hop, Trey Young. Fine. Thrown up once again. Billy Longer almost turned inside out. Weller working hard, so to his Hayes. After the Fisher goal, Sam just getting his 22nd goal in 197 games. Of course, played most of those at the other end of the ground. Here's an opportunity for Vloston. Out towards a vacant half-forward flank region. Nunes gets there a little late, but did some good body work. The Conker hand pass is OK. They're running, and so too is Conker still. He backpedals oh, a little. Set up now. a switch play, and away they come. From the defensive side towards centre wing, where Chaplin, who's had a pretty good quarter, just bouncing it back into attack almost at will. Up towards half-forward. Griffiths takes the mark. Poor spoil from Shenton. He had the run and jump and just missed it. He could nearly yeah. give it a ride from there. He can, he can <laughs> kick it, but that's a telling Egan launch this thing. Oh, the the no, he's going to have a crack. He's going long. 
It's into the square, number of flies. Right, and Fisher now, finishes up taking them on. Did the umpire call Said he play on yeah. because he wasn't having a shot for goal? Yep. He didn't get the normal that's, time. That's exactly what happened, Josh, yes. Montagna. Mm. Tucked in the back pocket. Inside the last minute of this first quarter that has been dominated by the Tigers, particularly in the opening 10 minutes, the Koch and hand pass. It's going to be kept in play by Armitage, who just dribbles at some 10 or 15 metres. No one able to get it cleanly until Rewalt comes along to Jackie Stephen. He gets claimed, and the ball spills free over the line. Well done by Chris Newman. Well done indeed, and he's going to be paid. Well, nothing suggests to me that he can't go on, Chris Newman. I know that the contract is uh, yet to be signed. I don't know if they've made a decision. Yeah. He's got 11 possessions in the first term, Jerry. Although yeah. that wasn't his best. No. Well, he's got uh, that loose... In fact, 12 now. That's his 12th. And the next best on the ground is 9. So Montana's going to go down the line. Stan Let's pushing the boundary, literally. And it's off hands, what's so we'll have a throw in. What's your inclination, Jared, about Chris Newman? Would you well, play him on for another I'd season? be having him still on the list for sure. 33 next May. I think their strong finish to the year probably helps. Front on, front on. I just think that ability to kick the ball that well from yeah. defence is an invaluable asset. And he's an, an, an incredibly respected figure around the club, too. Foley, deep Griffiths, was he held? Play on. They're getting closer here. We've got nine seconds. And the umpire intervenes. So the Saints have kicked the last two goals of the quarter. Maritz tries to do it on his own. Armitage, oh, that was also mighty close to being a free kick. But the siren will sound to win the opening turn. Richmond kicked six straight before St Kilda were able to do anything really. But they were able to come back with the last two goals. St Kilda and the margin sits at 22 points at quarter time. Saying nothing fancy boys, nothing fancy. And Jason Dunstall, there wasn't anything fancy early on for the Saints. The Tigers burst out of the blocks. Six straight to 36. Then St Kilda managed to stem the tide a little. Got a couple themselves, even though perhaps a little fortuitously. But trailing now by 24 points, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been hit the nail right on the head. They were nothing fancy at all. They were, in fact, they were poor early. There was no defensive pressure. There was no determination to make a contest. And the, the Tigers did as they pleased. Now they got a, a fortuitous free kick, which resulted in a goal. And then they ended up kicking a couple of goals late, which at least gets them into the contest and killed it. But they need to come out with a vastly improved attitude in terms of just being determined not to allow things to unfold the way they've been unfolding. They've, they've got to be better than this. I mean, this is the team that touched up Fremantle. Indeed, touched up by 59 points. 24 points is the margin at the moment. We've seen almost coast-to-coast -coast footy from the Tigers. It's something Cam Mooney's had a close look at, Moons. Oh, you're right, Sam. Look, they've started absolutely brilliantly, didn't they? We, we spoke about it at the start of the game there. Quick ball moving off the half-back line. And we just see here, is the one here, getting chased by Magtania. Was that... A Holding the ball, we all thought it wasn't, but this is just a fantastic finish from 50. We spoke about him individually as well, getting forward of the ball. And again, we're seeing here off the half-back line, Grimes it is this time, he's playing on Stanley. Just took, took, took off, got the ball again, and you see him here, just race on again. It's a beautiful little chip over the top, and as all defenders do, they just give it off to the forwards. And a beautiful little kick over here to Marich, who maybe a little nice little drop kick there for one of the great team goals. But we're just seeing here the score launches. Those three in particular off the half-back line. We've got another one through the middle. And as you see, a couple of turnovers there in the forward line. But those ones from the back half, guys, they're the damaging ones right now. Thank you, Moons. So it's pretty tall up forward, aren't they, with Stanley, Revolt and Spencer White? Well, it gives them options if they could just get some quality ball in there. That was the problem. Uh, it was slow ball. It was coming out of the Tigers' forward line before it actually looked like getting forward. So you've got to get a, a handle on things in the middle of the ground, the Saints. Inside 50s in the opening term, 17 to Richmond, just 10 to St Kilda. Uh, did produce the last two goals, the Saints. So that will give them something going into this term. And they get the opening free kick. Jack Stephen, one of their prime young midfielders, had uh, seven disposals in the first term, and he continues on as Delaney kicks to half forward. He's one of four players I mentioned that's played every game this year. Finds Weller. He's been a big pickup for the Saints, Mavuela. He's done a lot of good jobs, and uh, he's one of the few players 
doing his job tonight. And he was on Hanabry last week. There's an opportunity. And they get another one. Armitage off the left. And that's three in a row. Well, you just mentioned they've got tools forward. So Mabwell did the right thing. He kicked it long and high to the tools, at least get it in a dangerous area. And then you give the other players a chance to to know that there's a predictable style of football being played. So they come in, they get numbers around the fall of the ball, nearly a mark over the back, but good hands there from Nick Revolt finds David Armitage, the man we heard uh, a little voice from just before, doing plenty of talking out there. And all of a sudden, they are right back in the contest, the Saints. Back to a 16-point ball game. Fair crowd on this cool Sunday afternoon in Melbourne for one side battling to get into the eight and another battling to avoid the wooden spoon. Genuine effort to dispose. Not there, so the free kick going the way of the Tigers. As I mentioned, they're the most liked club as far as the umpires are concerned. Conquer. Up towards the half forward line. Cochin was a target. He wanted a free kick. Farron Ray says, No, no, I'm on my way to Rewalt. Unusual target uh, to pick out Trent Cochin. You've got the same kick goes straight down the middle. You've got much taller options and you've got a lot more support if the ball gets the deck. Clinton Jones back into the side this week. He's up towards half forward. Saints get another one here. They could just uh, cause a little bit of concern for the Tigers. Hold there, please. Hold there, please. Yep. Armitage in towards full forward. Smashed away by Ellis, and the second thump goes over the line. Edwards sees it over, one behind. 3-3. Damien Harbour would be oh. getting pretty annoyed. Yeah. He's getting more annoyed now. Oh. Brandon Ellis with the lazy kick out. Oh. So a big kick here for Nathan Wright. Has not kicked a goal in his short career. This is 14th game. But this to cut the margin to just nine points. The boy from Berwick fires away and hits the woodwork. A bad miss. Yeah, yeah, bad miss. Puts them right under pressure. We spoke earlier, halfway through that first term, Tigers were playing party football. Well, you get sucked into thinking things are just going to happen and yeah. they're actually not working hard now. They're just trying to, to play, you know, pr pretty football. Well, I think the next five oh. minutes will tell, but uh, they won't want to make similar errors to that one from Alice. But they are just now growing in confidence, the Saints. It's been a tremendous fight back. It's a miss kick to some degree from Newman. It's set it up for Fisher. Billy Long has pushed forward, so they are really tall as the kick goes in there, and Marriage did well. Got the fist to it when needed. Height's only a problem if, in fact, you can't uh, run on the deck. And you can say the same about uh, the Sydney Swans or even the West Coast Eagles, but they've never really been uh, disadvantaged because all their tools tackle and chase and harass like uh, mid-sized players. And that's the challenge for Spencer White and for Reece Stanley to use their athleticism like their skipper does. Rick got out of there, but it's coming back through Sean Dempster. Not Reece Stanley in space all on his own. It's taken a little while to recognise that. Instead, he sets it up. Longer from one side, not from the other. Right now, the intensity is about square. In the first 15 minutes of the game, if we had a measurement to... Uh, or a machine to measure intensity, it would have been uh, through the roof for the Tigers and uh, basically zero for St Kilda. Penthead walks back into the mire and he's not getting out easily, although in the back, Hayes oh. is giving away the free. Lenny's not happy. <laughs> so, to the outer side of the ground, Saints have got the numbers. Stanley was there, he's been pretty quiet so far in this game, but he's not on his own. The marriage hand pass is wide, too wide for Edwards, who's got Shetton hot on his hammer. And over the line. Much better forward pressure. It was absent in the first uh, quarter. First uh, half of the first quarter for St Kilda. And now they're pushing up and making the extraction for Richmond much more difficult. Longer won it. Ross. A little hurdle. And then gets a left foot kick back towards Stanley. 
couldn't complete the mark. Grimes had him locked up. Basha Hurley had a sensational first quarter. Newman, a good tackler also. That ball is staying in there, I think. So we've got another ball up. Just outside the 50. The Saints bouncing out of the blocks in this second quarter. More effective scoring shots at the moment than the Tigers. Here's Miles. Back to Hurley. Just much better defensive pressure by St Kilda. He's got Chaplin screaming for it, and he honours that call. Now they're starting to run. Down towards uh, centre wing. It's going to be a free kick, and it's going to go the way of Nunes against Ellis, who's not having his best day at the moment. 50. And now 50. 50. Well, Alex Rance is claiming he was going to man up on Nick Rebold, but he came in across the protected area to actually do it and he wasn't within a couple of meters of him and look at rewalt sprinting downfield to try and make a position possibly for nunes armature just snuck off the bench spencer he goes long to the top of the square really and poor option. marriage just gets a hand to it there's a frustration yeah. look coming from nick rewalt as you can see he threw his hands up because he kicked it over the head of all the tools and there were richmond players back there so they never had yeah. a chance to run and jump at the footy so that's the case where you've got to pull a little off the kick and just just chip it 40 meters newman did just that chipped it in I'm happy to deal it around with bachelor kept on coming drives to the wing bit of a task for gordon oh! flash over the top kicks it quickly up towards the 50. Now, if he can get through here, there was a, a spare man pushing back to goal, but Revolt couldn't really compete. He was outnumbered, and there's a free kick. Oh, that's a, unfortunate for the Saints because Morris came straight off the bench. Armitage was all on his own. Gordon doesn't quite know where he is at the moment. A little crook. Yeah. Pretty handy having Sam Fisher back in this side. He is reading the ball like the All-Australian defender he is. Um, I don't think that was from the mark. That was uh, the contest afterwards, I think. Pettit got it in deep. Gilbert, Dempster, Seb Ross, Jack. Good collaboration by the Saints defence. Jack Stephen, I should have said, chipped it over the top. The champion. We're not even talking about that. First time basis, clearly. <laughs> Ray off the left boot. Beyond Jones. Here's Morris close to the boundary and takes it over. No contact. So a free kick to the Tigers. See the pressure right back on Richmond here. Can they find a way to, to goal? Alice slides in and takes the mark. Well, yeah, once no. again, they've got the spread going, but the Saints have slowed them up magnificently. Yeah. It's just a completely yeah. different game. Hooley again. Short to Newman. Chris Newman can go laterally as well. And he does. No patience required here. Chaplin to Morris. Morris can go. A little longer it was a difficult one to grab it was well picked up on the half volley by griffith now they go wide to the outer side they got runners streaming down the ground morris is one of them or well, the pass is on and that's going to be okay petted once again, Short again. Intercepted of the interception of these kicks is killing the tigers gilbert defends that's poor as well he's going to get petted another chance can he make amends now pops it up for wards rewald well done again man in the middle Spoiling it, Armitage couldn't take it cleanly, but they maintain possession and flick it down towards the half-back line. Grimes is there. He couldn't take it cleanly either. Opportunity for Ross. Clay, but gets the hand pass away and well smothered to keep the ball in play. Tigers still with another opportunity. We'll have a look at Gordon's mark. But that was well smothered by Vloston. I think Hutto summed it up. Flash. Indeed it was. Here's Ellis around the body. Again, no mark taken. Should have been. Edwards threw it out the back door. No one is there, though. Weller with an opportunity to soccer off the ground. But he elects to pick it up, and he gets it away towards a teammate in Stephen. Stephen gets the hand pass clear, and the Saints are out of trouble for the moment. He's playing inspired football, Jack Stephen. And so are the Saints, just for the moment. They're defending hard, and now as they transition the ball forward they need to make the most of it revolt outnumbered and he's an outstanding player even he though couldn't overcome the odds and hooley bounces away but he's got nothing to kick to nothing clean it's to a one-on-one -on -one. pettit wanted to use his leap but he couldn't because of the excellent body work 
by Shenton and now Gilbert. And the rebound takes the mark very wide. Well, they're just working harder just at the moment. The Saints working harder to support each other. And it's telling on the scoreboard. The other thing they're doing, Jerry, is creating one-on-one -on -one opportunities for Nick Revolt. Now, we saw him have one a moment ago that uh, Alex Rance was able to spoil. But I reckon Nick would be happy if he's presented with that many one-on-one -on -one opportunities. He'll back himself to win his share and convert them into goals. And the evidence was when Basher Hurley came off that half-back line, he didn't have anywhere to go. And I looked across the field and no one was running to space. Gee, it's a fantastic kick from Nick Revolt. And the Saints are back within seven points. His first goal, his 48th for the year. And that man, Alan Richardson, he must have had some inspired words at quarter time. Let's see if we can have a listen. On tackle, though, we want to be aggressive. I'll give Jim Dowell a bit of a advice on being aggressive there. Just make sure we're not giving away three kicks, so we're giving away six. So I like the fact we're cracking, particularly second half. Boys, you've had the last four shots of the game. Yeah, we're right in it. Come on. Shots of six to four. Yes, they've made the most of their opportunities with the Bruins. Yeah. Hey, hey, just this board is really significant now. Not necessarily because of where your name is, because of the structure of the board. We're playing six, six, six. We're going to back ourselves in. <laughs> Too often, uh, from the stoppage point of view, they were able to get the ball out the back. Even if we won the stoppage, you know, we, we'd get a quick pressure play. So that's what we're that. We end up with six. We round up late, etc. Great access from the Saints and whatever it was. Uh, with that and a bit more that he said, well, it's what it got was, them was going. Positive. They were well down on the board, but uh, he went positive. Here's Miles. They need a steady out. He's away to the left. The other thing I like, Jared, is he was able to see that the tide was turning before yeah. the quarter time siren had sounded. He said, we had the last four scoring shots. Things are starting to go our way. Don't worry about the fact that they kicked six straight early. They made the most of everything they had. And now all of a sudden, the game feels like it's on an even keel. Well, now it's nine scoring shots to seven. Hurley, gee, he did well then. He came from behind, he got in front and fisted the ball away from Jay Montagna. Interesting matchup that one, Montagna and Hurley. Both have had plenty of the football. I'd say at this stage Hurley has created more damage. Griffiths, because they're holding, well the umpire says just play on. So Ray takes them on, he loses the footy. No doubt it'll be miles down the bottom. It is. On the 50. Floated high by Conker. Not the required distance. So Armitage will get onto that left boot and defend. He does. Back towards centre wing. Now there's been a whistle and it's going to the Tigers. It's going to Grimes. Yeah, he, was he shepherded out? Well, yes, because uh, what, he, what the umpire spotted was that Tommy Curran took his eyes off the footy to find out where his opponent was to engage him. I reckon he was a little stiff because he did it nice and early and then turned around to chase the footy once he found out where his opponent was. Here's an opportunity for the Tigers again. Through Gordon, who made a couple of blues early, but he's steadied down. Took a sensational grab, and now he's found his forward. He can have another shot at goal. Jack has already kicked two, both of those coming in the first quarter. Tigers have kicked just the one behind so far in this quarter, just over 14 minutes. Reese Conker, uh, he's going to get better at it, but just a quick kick from that last stoppage went up in the air. He had a little bit more time, but he's now running with the man Hutto calls Jack. Jack Stephen, and not surprising, he's uh, had plenty of the football in his second time. And here's Jack Rewald. 48 metres, he's kicked it. The stadium that they wanted has come from their key forward, who's now got three. Looked like he was striking them very well in the first quarter. Kicked a couple of rippers, and that's another beauty. Look at this free kick. So he turns around to find out where he is. Then he engages him so he can get involved in the marking contest. But the umpire pinged him for that. And then they just methodically move the ball forward. A short chip, and then a little pocket of space to lead into. A little bit too easy. I'd be disappointed the Saints. They didn't get numbers back to fill that hole. He loves playing against the Saints, Jack Revolt. He just doesn't look like he needs a lot of the ball to kick a bag today because they're no. coming off the boots so well. And you can see the scores from turnovers there. They've profited very nicely indeed, the Tigers. Maybe that's the, 
Goal that can get them going again. Miles up for Gordon. Fisher came, didn't show much respect, just slapped it away. It was good stuff, and he goes again. Sam Fisher, he's showing that he can play on another year. I think he's had so many injury troubles. Yeah, yeah. He's keen to keep going. He's been a huge loss though for St Kilda. We're talking in A grade, absolute elite centre half back over the last 10 years or so. It's been sadly missed by the Saints. Just his sixth game for the year, and he's up to game 197. Hayes to come to the pressure, and the Tigers look they might have clicked oh. back into gear. From stage left came the pressure, and then Rance is able to put it on the chest. But Jack Revolt is going back for his fourth. I just reckon the mistake that Nick Revolt made was he bumped him instead of tackling him. Yeah. So he bumps him and the ball spills free. If he tackles him, he probably gets a free kick for incorrect disposal. And now, because the Tigers were able to maintain possession, Jack Revolt is lining up for number four. He's been significant though, Basha Hurley. Almost in every scoring option, he has been one of the driving forces. Well, Buddy kick five today, and looks like he's got the Coleman medal sewn up. But the way Jack Revolt's going today, who knows? Was. It was a bit, wasn't it? Three goals, one. Margin 15. So back into play. Saints desperately need another one here just to stay in touch coming towards halftime. But Morris defends, pushes the ball over the line. Had the double punch, which means he could have grabbed it. It's uh, that innate defence within, I think, from uh, Steve Morris and those of his ilk. Sees them uh, continually do the defensive option. Hayes working hard, but uh, to no avail as Edwards takes it. And he swings around on the right boot. Rewalt didn't get it. Uh, Clear passage to fly. It's going to be kept in play momentarily. A cry of ball. Oh, boy. Could have been a little harsh. Tigers trying to go forward again. They've got the numbers. If Cochin can get clear, he can't. Morris was there to assist, but all too late. Armitage is under the pump, not Good before hands. he gets the hand pass away. And now Gilbert can go onto the left, and he does to the outer Which side. Which is a wobbly kick, but it was the, the only, it was the work. only option that he had. Snyder. <laughs> He's got to beat a couple. He eventually gets clear. Well has got to put his skates on. An opportunity for the youngster now. Feigns the hand pass. Looks down towards the 50. And the mark, and it's a good mark too, taken there by Curran. Spencer White's calling from the square. Good transition by the Saints. They're working hard. Matt Well has done some good things too. Yeah. Been a really good pick up by the Saints. He's got Longer and Spencer White in the goal square on Morris. It's he just there, had correct. to get it in there quickly. Tom Curran. Tight angle. Kicking from 48. Goes into the square. Big pack of players lunging at it. Miles was waiting down in front for the Tigers. Cochin lurking also. Longer gets a hurried little snap. Goes nowhere. Stephen again across the face of goal. And one behind. Unfortunate miss there from Jack Stephen. But he's battled on really manfully. He's had a, an issue with his foot or his ankle for most of the year. But he's hung in there. We'll probably need to have that addressed over... The summer period because the Saints need him at his absolute best. Alice blasts the ball out to half back for the Tigers. Grimes! Oh, he's having a great day. And it's really freed up some run. Grigg charging forward. Gordon's going to be the target if they eventually release the kick. Revolt was there as another late option, but he does go to Gordon who kept on his feet. All important. He might line them up and how he had a look for teammates. And there's a few there. Didn't quite find the target. He was after the Lydia. It was negated pretty well. He hasn't had a, a huge influence. One goal, eight disposals to Lydia. There's a lucky let off for Sam Gilbert on the far side, over committing, allowing Gordon to play on. Really should have punished the Saints there. Nunes. Well, they just keep overlooking Spencer White, who's providing some good leads. He was clearly in space then. Oh. He just got ignored. Fierce tackling from Stanley. Yeah, it was a bit high, there's no question about that, but the umpire was blocked. And let it go through to the keeper. Alice continues to accumulate his 11th disposal. Been a massive ball winner this year for the Tigers. 
I'm with you, Jason, on Spencer White. So many times we've seen him charge up the ground. He's uh, got a one-on-one -on -one option. Good athlete. Gets front position. He gets a few metres clear, but they won't kick it to him, Jim. Now they're moving again. Flostone brings it into the middle. Big opportunity here in game 150 for Shane Edwards. He's way away to the right. So they couldn't miss in the first quarter. Mm. But again, they're getting that rebound off the defensive uh, half back into their game. That's where it appears they play their best footy. Saw Damien Harbour, I reckon he's aware they need to make a few of these opportunities count. Just to open up a bit of breathing space. Under five remaining. Stevens kick out, Hurley and Armitage. Did Bashik got one in the back the first time or maybe the second time? I think he got what he wanted. He's gone, he's gone here, Hurley. Has to. Yep. So a victory for Armitage. Centering to Ross. Needed ideally a couple before half time the Saints in towards Stanley, but that was too easy for Marich at the back to come away. And now they can mount another charge forward up towards half forward, courtesy of Gordon. He looked towards the 50 now and Cochin. Cochin short. That was too easy. That well, was brilliant play, but it was only affected because Marich did the gut busting running to get back and support. He did the roving on that occasion and set it up from the half-back line. And again, the Saints, uh, sorry, the Tigers get a shot at goal because of the rebound off half-back. Yeah, it was a poor kick, though, from the Saints going towards Reece Stanley, sent up forward, kicked it in behind him. So, Rewalt for number four, two in the first quarter, going one so far corner. in the second. Yep. Going around the corner with plenty Stephen of angle Jay. to work with. Gee, that's a good kick. That is a magnificent kick for goal. He can do no wrong today. Jack Rewald has got four, and the Tigers will once again assert their authority. Well, he kicked the beauty the in the first turn around the corner, but that was a much tighter angle than that one, Jared. Yep, it was an interesting one because he did just come off the back of missing one from about uh, 40 out, 45 degree angle. Not a difficult shot, but it's clearly something they're very comfortable in doing because uh, this is not was not a massively difficult shot with a drop punt, but he's hitting those ones out of the middle. Good kick by Cochin too to set it up. Margin back out to 21 oh, points. Yes. Saints need to finish off the quarter strongly for all the effort they've put in and the ground they made up. They got to within seven points. Tigers though, keen to go again. Revolt up to four goals, so they've got a functioning forward line. They've got an aggressive midfield. Miles, they've worked it through to Edwards again. The setup complete. Griffiths charging back to goal. Jack's gone down. Uh, Fisher stayed on his feet. And able to come away. Now Mav Weller can run off half back. We're two next. Armitage along the line. And he's able to work another handball to Weller. The power's on. Stanley, oh, got a fingers there. It's over yeah, line. Yeah. Is that Mav Weller does a power <laughs> running. <laughs> it's a face full of expression, isn't it? Was, was, he, was he yelling at the umpire or his teammates? I think the umpire. Mm -hmm. Hope for his sake he was. Now low ball for Reval. He couldn't handle it. A little bit greasy. We had quite a bit of rain before the, uh, the match. Downfield, downfield. The advantage would have really sufficed for the Tigers there. It's, it's down the ground. It's down, down the ground. So it's marriage's ball. It's given, the, it's given the Saints a chance to set up, so they should be able to at least make a contest on the back of this kick. Really to the Tigers' advantage with the, the big frame of Billy Longer in the way. That's a good mark. It was a terrible kick from Lyman. Awesome. He kicked it straight to a two-on-one situation in his direct opponent. Here's Montagna. Goes away. Looking for Stanley and finding him. Relatively quiet, but he swings around now to that right boot. Rewald is his target. Oh, yes. Rewald, he finds. It's a great mark. He had got back on his own, Nick Rewald, so he had a run and jump at the footy, and it was kicked into traffic, but that's a good pair of hands. It was a brilliant mark. It was a mark of the night to date. Well, there was one other one uh, we do remember from Flash Gordon. But I really like Rhys Stanley's work. He's working hard in the ruck, and he's just pushed out to the half-forward line, swung around and hit a target. 
So can Nick finish it off? Three goals against Sydney last week. Oh, and he's he's missed. He's missed to the left. It's one thing they can't afford. They've had more scoring shots, or they've had the same number of scoring shots now. And they trail by 20 points. Been a great strength in this year, his finishing work. 11 oh, scoring shots apiece. So uh, Marich and Longer set themselves. Dexter comes over the back. Looks down to a moving forward line. And oh. well, he almost picked out Grimes. Just a little too much on it for him. Into the pocket it goes. Stephen is lurking to try and get a crack from the boundary line. He's not going to get that opportunity because it's taken over by Grigg. And we've got another throw in. Marriage from behind. Longer in front with the right. Again looking for Stephen. Not going to find him. Hooley accepts the hand pass. Repetted. Kicks up towards the half back line. Rewalt almost threw that out. Right, yeah, I'm afraid you did, you did uh, Jack. I reckon he was no, stiff here. He, he was stiff. He, was I he? reckon he handballed it yeah. and the handball was smothered. And then when you go to tap the loose ball, the umpire thinks that's a throw. Be interesting to have a look at a replay if we get an opportunity. He goes short. That's okay to Stephen. Happens was, a bit, I reckon. It does. He was adamant he didn't throw it. Yeah, I'm with you, Jason. He, he did said handballed, it was smothered, and it was a separate incident of, of whack. Nick Rewalt was a target. Joe Montagna lurking. He gets claimed. And we've got another throw. Another ball up. We'll have a look at it again, boys. See what you think. So he handballed it, slewed off the outside of the wrist, and then he taps it the second time and they pay a throw. So you saw him yelling before. He wouldn't want to get too many more go against him. His head might explode. <laughs> well, he's going. Towards, uh, center wing. Cotchen an opportunity. Well, that's Time's deliberate. going to be a problem here. That's as that deliberate as anything I've seen. Set deliberate, and it is, but it matters not. Because uh, it's 130 metres from goal. He's having a laugh about it, Trent. <laughs> <laughs> so half time, and the Tigers in control, but certainly getting a scare now. Rewald is just going over to the umpire, and he's talking about that alleged throw, which he says was a hand pass. Not getting a lot of joy from the men in Lyme, however. So let's head down to the boundary uh, on the ground. In fact, is our man Cameron Mooney. Moons. Adam, it was, a, it was a horrible start for you guys, but brilliant second quarter to get back into that game. Yeah, it was. Uh, we wanted to start well. That was one of our main focuses, but fortunately we didn't, so it was good to really come back that second, that second quarter. And what was the main message during that second quarter? Was it about just going man on man more? Um, well, look, we looked at it at the quarter time. We had this, uh, one less scoring shot than them. They just went in and really capitalised. I think they kicked six straight, so we didn't take our chances. And, and again, at half time, we didn't take our chances, but we're right in it, so it's good. What do you need to do to take these chances? Is it more about the kicking going inside, or is it more about your fours presenting a little bit more? Uh, four seven, mate. We turned around to seven four. It's a different game. Um, Look, I think we're going well. Rui's given us a real good target, as usual. Uh, Spencer's going all right. So if we can just convert the goals, mate, it'll give us our best chance. Thank you, time, Sons. 20 points the margin here at the MCG. Saints are still in it, but the Tiger train is on the move. 8-3-51. They lead St Kilda 4-7-31. Player with the Brisbane Lions, the man who was born in Papua New Guinea. Right now, though, there is uh, a half of football still to be played in this round before we start talking more about finals. And Cameron Mooney, who needs to lift, do you think? Thanks, Hello. Look, it's no, 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 no coincidence that they had a really poor second quarter there, Richmond, on the back of Cochin really struggling to get his hands on the ball with Weller doing a fantastic job at the moment. He only had the two kicks at the moment. He's had the 12 possessions, but only the two kicks. Delidio is the other one we spoke about at the start of the game, who's winning a lot of the ball forward of centre at the moment. But tonight, really struggling after quarter time. Only the eight possessions. We know he kicked a beautiful goal. Needs to get his hands on the ball. We know uh, Hawley and these kind of guys are coming off the half-back line. They need to link up with Delidio through the middle of the ground. Once they start doing that, boys, I'm sure they'll run away with it. Good on you, Moons. Thank you for that. To Jason and Jared Healy, our two special comments men, former champions of the game. Gentlemen, Dimmer, what do you think his message would have been at half-time? Well, I, th I think just don't forget the basics and go back to doing the hard work. They started really well, and it looked like the Saints weren't really up for the uh, for the fight, Jared. But then all of a sudden they got their, their noses back into the game, and it became a real struggle. And I think they dropped their work rate, the Tigers. So they've got to come out all guns are blazing. I think you'd uh, like them to be a little bit uh, more systematic with their kicks inside forward 50. We've seen half a dozen interceptions by uh, defenders dropping off by St Kilda. So they're just uh, cheek cheap uh, turnovers and he'd like that to be addressed so when they go inside forward 50 they at least get a shot at the sticks 
20 points the margin as we go into the second half. After a blister, blistering opening, the Tigers have been tamed a little in this second quarter. Gordon's hand pass is OK to Newman from a standing start. Pumps it down towards Jack Rewald, who didn't get a favourable bounce. Dempster's at the back. Goes short to a teammate there in Delaney. Stephen gets it away, and the Saints, uh, well, he might have gone over the boundary line. So it's going to come back. Farron Ray. Now in the veteran class and nearing a major milestone. No debate over that one. No. Well, it is a time and space game, this. You've got to know uh, where inside the line is. Game number 196 for Farron Ray. Longer wins it with a left hand. The Miles hand pass is OK. Edwards shoots it forward once again for the Tigers. Deep into attack. Hammered towards the line. And safety for the moment for the Saints. He's been an unbelievably good story, Anthony Miles, coming for yep. the Tigers midway through the season. Every time he touches the ball, something happens. He rarely wastes the possession, and he gets it in nice and tight. Indeed, it is a great story. The boy from North Albury, Lenny Hayes, on the last line of defence, goes wider to Gilbert. He's tucked in the back pocket. The Montagna lead is ignored. Eventually, he does play on, having been called a couple of times. White comes across the top in the front of the pack, including Chaplin. Can't take the mark, and the ball goes over the line. His hands still couple. Spencer White just needs to keep presenting, keep getting involved. Just had uh, a one kick. It'll be a good experience. He's just going to keep presenting. Interesting throw in. The Ruckman both went to ground. Saints almost get it to the wing. It's up for grabs. Who wants it the most? Gordon. Gilbert was with him all the way. Well, a bit of subdued start to this uh, second half. A couple of half opportunities for Richmond. Nothing so far for St Kilda. Numbers multiply. Hayes tries to fight out of there. Eight, three to four, seven. As we've discussed, the scoring shots are level, but... The margin is significant. Cotchin trying to burst his way through. Decided to go back for help from Edwards. Ball slides into the pocket. Gilbert, a bit of a oh. fumble. Goes to ground. Pen, it's got him. Oh. And he is cooked. Surely. Wow. It's a lucky escape. A bad fumble under pressure. Longer down for Ray. And it'll be marked by Edwards. He's always had a great vertical leap, Edwards, and we saw it on display again there. And he's been generally a magnificent shot at goal. Go back and have a, court, a kick. Decides to pass. It's sloppy marking when the ball gets held up for that long, and you still find a little lead-up target when there's so many players back, so many loose players for the Saints, supposedly filling up space. That's just a lack of a lack of attention to detail. Kicked an excellent goal, and the Tigers were white hot at the start of this game. Nudges out to the right, and the kick is dead straight from Bit Brett Delinio. That's his second, and the Tigers lead by 26. Well, their gun midfielders uh, getting on top here. One of them is now playing inside forward 50, Brett Delinio. I think Cochins had a good start to the opening uh, couple of minutes of this half. Well held, I reckon, by Weller. He's had 10 possessions to half time, but Weller's done a pretty good job. He's got a number of possessions in this uh, early part of the game, though, in part of the second half. But Delidio's work inside forward 50 can be, what, 50%, even less than that uh, of his midfield work, but can, he can be a more effective player. If he kicks three goals in an afternoon's work or an evening's work, he's delivered. So back in the middle. Chris Newman's the most prolific ball winner so far today with 19 to his name. Schneider, he gets it out to Weller. Saints go forward. Rewald has dropped back. The Tigers have got the numbers there. Chaplin, if he can keep it in play, and he will. If they can get it over the top, they're out of trouble. Not yet, not yet. So we just saw three incredibly poor tackles. Incredibly poor. Armitage to Shenton. He should have been coming back. Should have been stopped cold, Alex Rance, three times. Moon's the rain coming down. 
Armitage. Um, Moons is just taking cover. Is that a question? <laughs> or are you <laughs> taking 50. the you know what out of me down there? Uh, <laughs> Morris. He's taking the rain out of me. <laughs> Morris takes it back and go into the middle to the big man, Marich, who gives it off once again. The Tigers looking dangerous. Going inside 50, running with the flight of the ball. Was really well. Got to get a free kick. A high tackle on Jack. And he's going to go back and kick for number five. Well, that's the exact example we were talking about in the first quarter, Jason, where it was Fred Newman coming through the middle of the ground and he was looking for Jack to charge inside Ford 50. Well, on that occasion, he got on his bike and it was a great lead. He nearly snaffled it anyway. Free kick was definitely there, but uh, good running defensive work initially and then turned it into attack the Tigers off the halfback again. 30 metres out, almost directly in front. For his first in this third quarter. The slow, deliberate approach pays dividends. He's now got five for the day. And the Tigers have well and truly steadied the ship. Well, I'm glad he went with a drop punt. I would hate him to have done the uh, Stevie J curve. You would have left the building, Jason, <laughs> if you had a... Tell you what, how good was the kick, though? Once they opened up the corridor again, a few times I've explored the corridor tonight. Delidio gets the ball. And that is just a perfectly weighted kick over the top where the players are sprinting back with the flight of the ball. Nearly impossible for Luke Delaney to spoil that. They've got the Lydia absolutely in the right spot at the present time. The way this group is now, they've got a bit more run uh, through the midfield coming through and starting to mature. Miles has helped. But you want him with the ball kicking it inside forward 50, if not him inside forward 50 kicking the ball. Longer got the tap. Miles hit it so hard express got the handball out to morris and they can go out of the middle through edwards perfect kick yeah. too scorcher mark but taken by griffiths has a quick view into the 50 rebounds coming hard but he's got deeper plans to really put the st kilda defense under Good pressure but they stand up it's one thing to have a long boot but on that occasion didn't help did it, it was to yeah. nobody's advantage except st kilda's He's been a great player over the year, Sean Dempster, all Australian back pocket yeah. a couple of years ago. He's had to play six foot four, six foot five yeah. at times. He's played key position. He's played on the best smalls in the game. Incredibly versatile player. Fisher back to Hayes. Got the instructions and then kicks to the wing. Spencer White flew with the ball batted away and the Tigers now chuffing through half forward again. There's the kick from Hooley. He's made it very wide. Your thoughts on Spencer White, Jason? Well, we were talking about him a little earlier. He's just got to keep presenting. This is all about experience. You're not going to come in and, and just light up the stage in your first game. But he looks to be a good athlete. Uh, we saw one on the lead that he should have taken, just didn't have soft enough hands. It bounced off the hands. Another one that he, he got his hands to was a high mark. He's just... The most important thing for him is to try and inject himself into the game at every opportunity. Edwards yeah, kicked it in quite... Go as far as he would have liked. Ross was smart with the hands. Stephen takes him to the wing. Revolt. Oh, there's an excellent effort from Rance to break even and get that over the line. There's a lot to like about some of these Saints kids. Seb Ross has been uh, slowly developing, but we just saw a really brilliant handball there that tells you that he's a gifted young player. Margin 32. He just joined us. The Tigers kick six straight. See Conquer at the bottom of the screen there, up against uh, Joe Montagna. In the opening term, and the Saints were able to kick a couple of goals. And then in the second term, really worked their way back into the contest. Got within seven points. Richmond have pushed away again. And lead by 32. Jack Revolt's kick five. Richmond free. Uh, safe. Ooh. No. Richmond free. Uh, Saints free. Uh, which way are we going? Because as soon as he calls out a team, they all bolt one way. And then they hit the brakes when he changed his mind. And had to go the other. Nathan Wright has the footy for St Kilda at halfback. They yeah. just keep hitting some poor kicks. Dangerously short. Pressure. Longer's in the middle. And That's a good grab from Longer. The mark. Wants to play on quickly. Oh, gee, put his teammate under the puck. Now they're in trouble. Gilbert. Shenton. Short. Not short enough. And at the back, they'll be able to tie down once again. Go out wide to the outer side. Conquer is there for the Tigers. Reese Conker, long and low, finding the boundary line on the outer side of the ground. Too wide for Grigg. Almost 10 minutes played in this third quarter. What a feat it would be if the Tigers could be around come September. 
three and ten. No other club in history has gone from three and ten to ten and ten. As usual, Miles at the bottom. Yeah, it's Lenny Hayes versus the bloke who plays a lot like him. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? It's been one of the great stories, as we've said, at Punt Road this year. And it's not over yet. Down towards half four, the diving attempt was there, but it wasn't good enough. The Hayes hand pass, okay. But the kick wasn't, it's stolen. They go inside 50 once again. Can Rewalt get free? No, he can't. Dexter's in the way. Well, it's a good smother, but they didn't turn it into a shot at the goal. Trying to hatch it, Jack. No, you're entitled to move him to get the footage, yeah. Yeah. He's just sitting on it. Because, because, of the blood, because of the blood rule. Yeah, I was saying, just uh, calm down. Moons, just, I, I was asking a serious question about the rain before. It did look like it was coming down, but it's gone away again. No, it has. It was just a quick little, little shower down there. I'm sure you're being all sincere up there too, Anthony. <laughs> I think he was, actually. So, the change has been made. Dempster can now get on with the job he does to Fisher. Fisher goes short to Ray. Quinn Jones doing a power of work to yeah. present. And, uh, equal to the task was Rhys Conger and his teammates coming over and saying, well done. Tap on the head from Chris Newman. Guys, it was Billy, Billy Long is the one that's come off with the blood rule. Really. A lot of blood coming out of the nose. It was a tackle that he made on Deledio through the middle of the ground. There was a big head clash. Thanks for that, Moons. We're just having a look at him receiving some treatment. Marich tried to use the body. Ross with one arm in the air couldn't take it. Deledio can. But again, he is, was a little too high, too, for Gordon. So Fisher goes to the outer side, and that's going to be OK. Well, that's poor execution from Brett Deledio. He's a long way from home, Nick Rewalt. So who can he find? Up towards the 50, that's OK. And they're scoring distance. They're critical disposal errors because that should have been a shot at goal for the Tigers. If it goes the other end of the ground and the Saints can grab a goal, all of a sudden you give them some energy, you give them some oxygen, thinking that they're still in this match. Well, what can Joey Montagna do? Tight angle. Kicking from 50 metres into a sea of yellow and black from the boundary line. Marich is there and puts up that big left paw and sees it safely over the line for a minor score. Ooh. Bit of high contact there, wasn't it? Yeah. And then he... They were both going in half the ball and one got there first and as much about self-protection as it is anything else for Lenny. Lydio's kick takes Richmond to the wing. Pettit. Former Demon has the mark at half back. Thumps it down the wing. Griffiths shuffles through. Got Gordon at the back. And there he is. He looks around. He waited. The traffic all went past. Marich's handball. He wasn't really ready for it, Miles, but gives it back nonetheless, and they maintain possession. Host of Tigers at half forward. Grimes can change the angle of entrance into the 50. Hooley stuck into the pocket calling for it, but Chaplin was down the middle with his kick to Foley. That was brilliant body work from Nathan Foley. He just turned his body to knock Shenton's arms away so he could protect the zone of where the ball was going to drop. It was a pretty good kick, but it wasn't perfect. But uh, he turned it into a really good mark. Just the use of the body. Somebody... Obviously, uh, not overly tall, but he did it magnificently well. He's lining up for goal. It's been a, a great stall. He's had a lot of injury issues. Nathan Foley is a very popular man at Punt Road, and he puts it through, and the lead extended to 37 now. It's an interesting one, Nathan Foley, Jerry. Where does he fit into the picture? Because for so long, he was the number one midfielder, the, the quick, explosive little runner that could bounce and do all sorts of things. You see him coming across... Here, just shepherding the ball, as you said, with his body. But he doesn't get much of a stint in the midfield anymore. No, he doesn't. He's, he's going to have to play that high half forward role. Uh, or the wing, 
maybe even in a forward pocket and just bide his time. But he's still got some pace and he's still got uh, a role to play, I think, in the Tigers over the next year or two. It's a bit of defensive forward he's, he's been doing as well, which... Well, he's got the capacity to do that because he can hurt you if he gets the ball. Nine possessions and a goal for Nathan Foley today. Yeah, that's his 44th goal in 152 games. Marich gets a hand to it. Armitage tries to bullock his way clear, but Marich puts a stop to that. A little bit of aerial ping pong before Cochin says, I'm going to pump it long up towards the 50 and rewalt territory. Couldn't take the mark. Gordon looks to recover. Gets a call further ahead. Uh, it was Farron Ray who intercepted and saw it over the line. He well, just gave it away, that handball, without lifting his eyes and having a look. Gordon, he's got lots of talent. He's got a uh, big future. Just needs to address a few issues around the ball. Anyone out the back? Vlosten's at the bottom of the pack. And going nowhere. Saints next week. Have the Crows at Adelaide. A farewell game for Lenny Hayes. Well, Saints have got some work to do right here, Sandy. They've uh, just not come out after half time. They're not winning enough contested footy around these clearances to give themselves a chance. Armitage was the one who sent it forward. Stephen was there also, but the Tigers again are able to repel. Comes across to Chaplin from Newman. His kick is a poor one. White gets taken to ground. Was he shoved? No. Oh. Basha Hurley just gives it away. Bit of untidy work at the moment. Going to be kept in play. Chance for Wright. Long it going nowhere. Marich also caught. And that'll be the end of the penny section. Gilbert's got him locked up. 16 and a half minutes gone in this third term. Tigers in control but not able to put the Saints away. Stephen ridden into the ground by Vlosten who picks himself up and gets it out to Greg. That was beautifully done. Foley outside to Edwards. There's been a whistle. Greg kicked the rebound for holding through the downfield. Jack so Stephen hurt too. So Jack Rewald has the free kick. Holding that left knee by the looks of it. He pulls it beautifully and look at that. Sensational mark taken by Griffith. But a wonderful kick. He saw Griffith. There was no one down in the square. And he pulled it to the left. And now Griffith can go back and hopefully capitalise on a lovely mark. We're watching Jack Stephen here. Hopefully that is a stable knee. He knew just straight away. Landed on, landed on it. So hopefully, hopefully just some bruising. Of the Tigers. She's a talent, isn't he, Griffith? I mean, it, it could be anything. Yes, you're a spot on, Hutto. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens uh, when Ty Vickery is available yeah. next week, whether or not they change up the structure because this kid is developing before our eyes. He goes into the ruck. Well, that, that's what makes him so valuable, doesn't it? I mean, every side needs a second ruckman yep. who can actually play a position, and he's showing that he can. Started with a really strong tackle by Nick Vloston, who is an important character for this team as well. Through the middle, he dragged Jack Stephen down, didn't give away the free kick. Here it is now. Just have a look, though, with uh, when he picks up the ball. He, he leads with his head. Unfortunately, he just missed it, but it's an element of his game he just needs to address. Hayes to revolt. We've called that a few times over the years. Spencer White's moving. Let's see if he can get onto the footy. Wasn't clean initially, and then that made life difficult. Tigers are dangerous once they can get it into the open spaces. Newman, creative. Alice has got him coming from every angle. Surely a free kick. Maybe not. Maybe he got the spoiling cleanly. Close to the boundary line. Hurley gave it to Petter. They kept it moving. Their hands are slick. Generally, the Tigers have had 132 handballs to 82 from St Kilda. Jack? Well, just Nick Vlossen again, who had the footy. He gets the ball, rolls, and leads with his head again. It was brilliant play in the finish, but he's putting himself at enormous risk by charging forward with your head. Boundary throw in front of the Southern Stand at the MCG. Tiger fans now expectant. They want more today, and then they'll be watching next week. And if Richmond go on to win here against the Sydney Swans. Are they capable of beating the Swans? They were close when they met them earlier in the year. Of course, they'll be on the road to play out at ANZ Stadium. Will Sydney rest any players? Mm. Well, they had another pretty solid win this afternoon to wrap up top spot effectively. Alice 
to half forward to pen it. Well, the Tigers are playing a lot better football than the last time they played, and they uh, pushed the Saints, uh, sorry, the Swans pretty close last time. And Ripple sneaks through the cracks, got it. Coxon was outnumbered, so couldn't really fly for it. He wasn't happy with the attention he was getting from Sam Gilbert. I reckon he got away with a decent nudge himself there. That's just on the back of the head of yes. Sam Fisher and play on. <laughs> and then he winces that he didn't get the free kick because he felt Gilbert had held on to him earlier. Fisher to bring him back into play. Need a response here from the Saints, Jason. They've been really poor, isn't it? been ordinary. Those yeah. kicks continue to put themselves under pressure. Hayes was the one under pressure. Hurley keeps it in play. Chaplin hand pass is okay. Lydia around the corner goes back in towards full forward. They're everywhere at the moment. Pettit's going to go back and kick number 13, and he does. Pettit gets his first. This is turning into a fair quarter for the Tigers. They storm away to a 50 point lead. Well, but this is a game predicated on decent foot skills. Yeah, when you turn it over with just a little chip out from the kick out you're going to be in trouble quick ball back in he had a run and jump and it petted they are just really falling in a deep hole now the Saints yeah it's been disappointing I mean the Tigers have come out to play you'd expect that but there's no defense there that's uh, rubbish from the Saints and they're letting themselves down because in the uh, 30 minutes ago they were right back in this game playing some really aggressive AFL football petted the seventh Tiger to score today the Saints, on the other hand, having real trouble going forward in this third quarter. If they do, it's usually repelled. Wasn't a good hand pass then by Bachelor, but put pressure on Grimes. Rewalt gets it out to Snyder, who gets a hurried and Hayes kick it to keep it in. Morris is on his hammer. Bachelor should have taken the space, but he didn't want to go onto that right boot. And uh, the sloppy handball back gives the Saints an opportunity. Yes, attacking for one of the rare times in this quarter. Tigers have racked up five goals. I know, as you can see, Jack Stephen came, just came back off the bench then too. He just did a couple of run-throughs down here. He seems to be okay. Well, that That's is good, good news. Yep. And just the one behind for the quarter from the Saints. Marriage worked his way through early. <laughs> Touch of Jimmy Cracker about that kick. The ball slides off the chest, but good aggression from Wright. It was an interesting kick off the side of the boot. Chase was on for Revolt, got the cruelest of bounces. Conker links up well. Chaplin waited, just tried to Nothing. measure the kick into the nowhere, hoping that uh, Flash Gordon could get on the scene, and he has, or has he given away the free? A hard bump by the looks of it. He looks a bit shaken up, Shanta. I understand that, but got him high. Shanta decides to hold it off to Montagna, who can send the Saints forward. Nick Reva. Oh, it's only one possession for 49 in this term. Yeah. Jason Delivio's just dominating 10 possessions. Oh, good mark. Spencer White. That good was use of the body. What'd you like, Jason? Well, he's just worked Troy Chaplin under it with a, a big step forward, just nudged him underneath, protected the ball drop, and then took the diving chest mark. That's natural forward play. And then, look, we said before, he's, he's barely touched the footy, but he's presented a couple of times. He's a big fella. Look at the use. Gets the low centre of gravity, that leg out there, and uses the hip. Well, they've really made him earn his spot in this senior team through two years. No one doubts his talent. Now his moment at the MCG comes for his first goal in AFL football. Well done to Spencer White. Well, despite the gravity of the situation on the scoreboard, it's a moment to cherish for Spencer White and for all Saints supporters watching because... The bloke on the left won't be here for long. Spencer White will be, hopefully, for them. Here's the hit uh, that set it up with uh, Gordon on Shenton, and he does collect him. He might have a few issues with that with the uh, MRP because he has taken, taken him high, but that has turned it around and uh, given Spencer White an opportunity. And the good thing was he really earned it. No, he did. I mean, that's what I think he needs to address is that last four metres before the ball comes, he's looked a little bit tentative. On that occasion, it was just 100% aggression. And if he can take that into the next attack on the ball, it'll get uh, more, it'll become more uh, easy for him. So the Saints get there first for the quarter. Delidio is having a wonderful run in this term out wide to Greg. Ray had him coloured, but Hurley's loose. 
Ash has had a field day. So on the southern stand side of the ground, they go down towards Marich and Stanley lumbering for the ball, but it's over the boundary. Got some news for us, Moons? Yes. Well, yeah, Chris Newman's just been subbed off, guys. He had the 21 possessions. Had an outstanding That's night. Uh, doesn't look to be any injury, so I'd say they're just resting the old legs. And young Ben Lennon just come on for the run. I don't know if you're always that keen for a rest when you've got the ball on a string. <laughs> Number one possession getter on the ground. You'd like to keep going, wouldn't you? I think so. I'm sure, he'll be, on the, I'm sure he'll be on the phone to Dimmer in a minute saying, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, he's done a grand job. and He's been a wonderful servant of the club. Here's White again. Gets a kind bounce. Yeah. And he tucks it under his arm and he runs. But he almost ran too far. He's lost the footy and the Tigers will get out of trouble. But... He had a crack. And that's great to see, Sandy. That's yeah. exactly how to do it. We didn't see that in the first two or three times he attacked the ball. But the bloke who dragged him down, Grimes, is quick. He is on fire at the so, moment. That's good form to be taking into a potential finals campaign. They've both got leg speed. Look at I mean, this. He's got big legs, good leg speed for a big bloke, Spencer White. So, a lot to look forward to. Still in the attacking zone. Stanley trying to do the work from behind Marich. Ellis at the base of the pack. They're all in there having a dip. Lennon trying to get a sniff, having just come onto the ground as the sub for Chris Newman. Stanley again with the right hand. Armitage off to Ross. Gets his kick just in time. Down towards full forward. There's holding on there, and that will be against White. So Grimes will take it from the back pocket. Takes it as a hand pass. And now they can run. 50. He's 50 and 50. He's kind of the advantage. Penalty. And some players still don't understand the run. <laughs> and come back through the through the corridor too. Thanks, Max here. Thank you. And it should open up the options as Richmond move it forward. The margin is 44. They've kicked 5 1 to 1 1 in the turn. Equal number of inside 50s. It's better ball use from the Tigers. Surely on that one, Jase, you've just got to pay the advantage, don't we? I mean, now that St. Kilda have got their numbers back, there's no advantage for Richmond in that call whatsoever. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. But once they make that decision to pay the 50, that's it. Tough bounce to swallow for the Tigers. Well played by Ransa. Yeah, put his body in front and wasn't getting past. Carlos kick. Really Charged out the handball. Well, Kevin Sheedy style handball. The kick goes out to the wing. And ill directed from Morris. Not sure who was looking yeah. for that. Stanley's got it and kind of kicks out the Saints into attack again. They've, they've hit back a little bit and killed here in the last five or six minutes. Richmond had all the momentum. Yeah, the effort's lifted for sure. The ability to score though has still remained pretty sparse. And Tagna chipping it. And as comfortable as Richmond's travelling, they've still got some things to work on. Some of the use of the footy coming out of that defensive area. Yeah, that last kick up the middle was, uh, it just wasn't on, and it would cost you big time against one of the top sides. Well, ambitious to think a four metre kick would be paid. <laughs> Armitage cornered here. Ross, they just stay ahead of the game by one hand pass, and another, <laughs> and another, and the wind up means that long shot's going to come into full forward. Weller's there, and he's got all. He didn't pay himself for the umpire. He's going to pay this one. He gave himself away in that well, didn't he? I reckon if he tried to claim it, you never know. Might have got away with it. Too honest. Foley's ball in the back pocket. Good kick. It was. Thanks, Lee. Well, they're looking for the siren here, the Tigers. Mm. They've uh, seen enough, done enough. They've got 100 seconds to waste. Just under two minutes remaining. Actually goes long. Push out. Fisher. Come back one minute. Thank you. He's been really good today, but he spoiled it with that kick, and it may pay the ultimate price. Rewalt's going to try and bounce this through. It only got to be straight, and it's not. It veers away to the right. And Sam Fisher can take a couple of deep breaths and breathe a sigh of relief. Well, he got away with one. It was a big left-hand push out. Umpire didn't penalise him, but then he gave it straight back. That's a horrid kick. Dempster is up towards the wing to Billy Longer. He's got Jones running for him. He stabs that left boot in towards Stanley. Gives it off quickly. Try and get one before three-quarter time. Curran involved in that, but finishes with Schneider, who's tucked tightly in the pocket. He's going to go short again to Nick Rewalt, who's still in the pocket. 
but the angle is not quite as severe. He never gives up. No. France. Even though he had no chance of having any impact there, he wanted to put contact on. He dived. And he's probably got the boots in the ribs from Nick Revolt, but he wanted to put pressure on, and it annoyed Nick Revolt. Just trying to work the heart rate down from about 190, get it down to somewhere under 150. So, Rewalt kicking for his 49th goal of the season, his second for the day. And you can hear the yellow, or see the yellow and black flags go up in the roar. A lot of well wishes from the fans having that shot. Indeed, yes, one behind. A lot of Tiger fans here. <laughs> oh, they're, they're anticipating something big, Hutto. Yeah. Well, they've got a quarter to play today as Ellis will hand the ball back to the officiating umpire. They're in control. And perhaps they're on the way to burying the Saints. They lead 13-5-83. St Kilda 5-9-39. It was the Tigers' quarter. One to play here at the MCG. And then, of course, the big decider, round 23, still to come. Next week. Let's head down to the boundary line, Cam Mooney. Moon, do you want to have a chat about Delidio? Well, we spoke about him at the start of the game, didn't we? We showed a couple of heat maps, his 2013 heat map compared to his 2014 heat map and how he's getting the ball. And here it is here, the 2013, where he's getting most of the ball down in that back half. And we know he only kicked the 10 goals last year. He couldn't quite get that ball centre or forward. But we go to this year, he's getting it all over the park. He's getting it more forward now. We're seeing him really push forward. And in that quarter alone, he had the 11 possessions, kicked the goal, and he had a couple of assists as well. Put it on him at half time, and only had the eight possessions up to half time. And then we look at the metres gained. He's up to 428 for this game, so he's on track to equal his uh, average for the second half of the year. So he's had an outstanding first and third quarters. Let's see if he can finish it off. Thank you, Moons. Yes, 19 disposals, two goals for Brett Delidio. Ben Griffiths also with a couple and five to Jack Revolt. All individual goal kickers for the Saints. As we head into the last term, Jack Stephen and David Armitage are going to lead this team in the midfield into the future. They've got a good stock of young midfielders coming through, but it's going to be quite a, a journey. See there that the sub has been made. Reese Stanley has been subbed off for the Saints, and that means that Murdoch comes onto the ground. Brody Murdoch back into the team and now onto the ground as the sub. Stephen looks for a free, he's going to get one. Thank you. His 17th disposal. Spencer White's got a bit of a run at this, and he just mistimed his leap. And here's Murdoch popped up. Very nearly kicked a goal. It's got a little bit of ice under the back of the right leg. High up, let's hope there's no hamstring issues there. Very high up around the glute. Didn't have much of the ball recently, just no. the five possessions. Quiet day for him today. Conquer from across half back. Heads towards the wing. Trying to use his strength in was Griffith. Will go again. Still going, but Gilbert tries to take it away from him. He's not successful. Fisher's down there as well, showing plenty of aggression for the Tigers. So thrown up in front of the southern stand. Little poke forward by Edwards, only as far as Jones. Towards the boundary line once again. Maybe a high tackle on Cochin. In fact, it is. So he plays on quickly. Grig was his target, and Grig he found. They change course coming across the ground. Rance with a sweeping hand pass. It's okay. They look up towards the half forward line. Tigers into attack all of a sudden once again. Grimes is clear. In towards half forward. And the mark is taken by Conker. Done some great running tonight, Grimes. Yeah. Delighted to be back after serving his time, Reese Conker. Foley locks up Jones and then steals it. Goes out the back door, gives it away. A snap by Gordon is away to the right. Through the one behind. Well, they'll really look to put the Saints to the sword here in the last turn, the Tigers. Margin 44. Going for eight in a row. You want to be going into next week's game against Sydney, where you 
You're going to need to win that to play finals. You want everything going for you. You want everyone getting plenty of the ball. You want the confidence from another big win. Good oh. teamwork from the Saints here. Steven on the break. It's a great kick. Yeah. yeah. Angled it wide for Farron Ray. He's got Shenton. Another 20 on. Just lofted the kick a fraction too much. Cotchen did well not to give away the free. Shenton needs his wits about him. He was able to turn around. Oh, probably too easily, really. And then put it over the chest of Curran. Well within scoring range. Now, not enough pressure from Ivan Merrick on that occasion. He was just ball watching and not uh, anticipating that he was going to be involved. That's one of the finest passages of play the Saints have produced tonight. Started with a really uh, inventive kick inside to Lenny Hayes, and they hit three or four targets to get this shot. And unfortunately, he's not going to be capped off with a goal from Curran. And uh, some frustrations for the coach there. Margin back to 43, and the Tigers are on the advance, coming from half back. They are. They've got Griffith calling for it long, but they elect to go short, and that's okay. Conker marks in front of Jones. Worked pretty hard tonight, Rhys Conker. Couple of weeks off, as we all know, but uh, he has really pushed himself hard. The Swans, uh, an impeccably clean sheet tonight. Marich slaps it forward with the one hand. Sloppy almost threw it out. That's sloppy stuff from Richmond. Yeah, good defense. Snyder, that's good. He's away. Now, White, can he cap it off with his second? He can. Well done by the big youngster. Two goals for the day in his first game. Oh, well, it was an impressive finish in the end. Was. He, he went and planted himself forward. He said, well, if everyone's going to push up, you can see the top of the screen there. All the Tigers players pushed up. Troy Chaplin, I'm not sure if he was peeling off, thinking he was going to receive the footy. But then he decided to play on, and he had no pressure on the finish. Did that easily. So some really good signs. He's only had a, a little bit of the ball. This is possessions, but two goals. This was the VFL. Yep. This is what uh, got everyone very excited. And you see yeah, the enormous running power and the comparisons on an ability, but uh, just in a little bit of style to Buddy Franklin. 13 684 to 611 47. Don't well, look at me no. like that, Jason. Let's hope he's on the path to the same sort of career because that would be unbelievable for the Saints. Just some ordinary shines here from the Tigers in this opening few minutes. Not from this bloke, but from a few of his teammates who are just running hard forward without uh, the ball being in their hands. Margin 37, the kick taken up to the wing. Conker. Arms flapping in the middle. And a few teammates wanting it. Actually decides on miles. Uncertainty. Oh. Cotchen's kick gets run down. So they're not clean at the moment. Richmond. Pressure growing a little. Opens up for Ivan Maric. He's confused. <laughs> he has a bounce, the big fella. Sets it up for Revolt. He waited to jump. In fact, in the end, he didn't really jump at all. Delaney paddled it towards the line and gets it over. Well, he's too busy worrying about uh, his opponent, Delaney, instead of just jumping and attacking the ball. He may not have marked it, but... It would have been a more competitive ball on the ground. Not often you see a bloke bounce when he's standing still. No need. <laughs> no, you're not travelling a great distance, are you? Longer. Out the back door comes to Delidio, who's had a big day today. Miles again, always amongst the disposals. Uh, Pettit turned inside out by Joey Montagna. He's been a good pickup for the Tigers, Ricky Pettit. Yep. Being played at both ends of the ground. And in the middle of the ground. And in the middle. There's the live ladder. Tigers away from the dreaded ninth for the moment. In eighth spot, 44 points, 106.6 percentage. Floston puts them inside 50 to Jackie Boy. And Rewalt will go back and have a shot for number six. Which way will he go, Jared? Well, if he's consistent, he'll go the Stevie J, but it looks like he's lining yeah. up for the drop punt. Conventional, it looks like. Look out. Right, well, he's go. going side on. <laughs> he's going side on. I like the bloke who set it up for him, though. Nick Vloston. Wouldn't be surprised if one day he captained this club, but he's a good addition to that midfield. Jack Stevens, very close, waiting to come in and smother. This for number six from Rewald. Perfect. Six goals to Jack. And consistent two throughout the afternoon. Two in the first, two in the second, one in the third. And now that one. 
The eyebrow raised, Jason. No, you, you don't argue if they kick the goals. But you leave yourself open if you miss them. <laughs> <laughs> it, sounded it was, like a, a, it was good, good, uh, good lead up. Flostone involved a couple of times and then just a little chip pass out in front. That's Beautifully the, waited. That's how the torpedo died its initial death. <laughs> with coaches saying, go for the torpedo anytime you like, <laughs> but don't muck it up. Yeah. <laughs> Goal number 54 for Jack Revolt, which has him in the race. Yeah, a long way back. Just 13 away from <laughs> Buddy. It's a few more in this last quarter, I suspect. He put his foot down at the right time, Buddy, the last couple of legs, didn't he? Yeah. He got a little uh, assist from those doing the fixture, though, with an indoor run uh, today, this afternoon. Yeah. Everywhere Ruff, else was wet. Roughhead missed one through suspension. The other players all had a quiet weekend. Schultz As Buddy was kicking double figures. Schultz, who led it for so long, is struggling to the line, isn't he? In the back! Jack Stephen! I think Black Tom on! It's coming back to Jack. Stephen takes it out to the wing. Still a little proppy, Jack Stephen. Ray just pokes it further. And just gets its destination. Armitage, that was a drilling ball. Unfortunately for the Saints, Gilbert slipped over initially, but. Still able to get it up, get the handball across to Murdoch. And the long shot for goal comes work. from right or across the face. Goes and it's going to be marked by Nunes in the pocket. A lot of pressure on there. <laughs> yeah. Ambitious where he thought he was going yeah. to get for the angle, wasn't he? But at least you've got to try. Mm, worth a try. Trying about 30 degrees. Yeah. So to take the margin back under that 40 point mark. It's good young talent. Let's see if he can slot one. One in four chance, according to the probability from there. Beautiful. And that might be the one. The ball's beautifully executed. His first, it's back to 37 points. And you can see a little bit of rain starting to drop in the background. He got a uh, face wipe from Jack, who was pretty happy that he'd slotted it. They've got some good talent coming through, the Saints. It's going to be a, a year or two before they start to emerge uh, in the upper uh, echelons of the finals or, or the ladder, Jason, but there's some good young running players coming through. I think that's a positive thing we've seen with all the cellar dwellers this year. We've seen it at the Bulldogs as well. The teams that we thought, Brisbane Lions in particular, that yep. were going to struggle. They've unearthed three or four or five really good youngsters that you just think, yep, they're going to be good players. And uh, perhaps things aren't as bleak as they might first appear. Well, the Saints also are missing some of their youngsters. Who've incurred long injuries that have kept them out of the game for the bulk of the season. Here's Conker low and flat to Rewalt. Couldn't quite complete the mark. Pressure now once again mounting on the Saints defence, but attempt to brings it away. Down towards the centre wing. They've got a chance to go forward again. The favourite son has it. Lenny Hayes. Centering ball in towards half forward. No one able to get a run at it, though. Only one person, and that was Rance. Let me wind it back, if you can, Jason, to the last Reese Conker kick to Jack Rewalt. To me, there's just not enough percentage in that one to be you know, spearing it into a bloke with two oh, blokes around him. Danger here. Hayes. Morris was in cruise control. Now, Chaplin inboard once again. Conker. First one way, then the other gets away from Jack Stephen. Pumps it in towards half back to Deledio. Oh, oh, funny hand. He didn't quite get it, the hand pass. And it may just open the door for the Saints. They're still outside 50. The kick goes long. White is the target. He's going to do the shepherding. Well, one behind. Unbelievably poor kick. He had Spencer White, he had Nick Revolt. He could have used either option. He could have handballed short over the top. And he chose to have the shot for goal. Chaplin over the top. Naturally. Short once again. Petted. That's good a good kick. kick. Penetrating yeah. kick. It's a lovely find. Did it beautifully to Lennon. Greg gets the hand pass to Hooley. The Tigers are away. In towards full forward. Gordon is one of the targets. Couldn't quite get down far enough to pick up the footy, however. Dempster on the last line of defence. Tries to get it clear. Now they pack. Can anyone pick it up? Yes, they can. Out it comes towards Gordon again. Tries to bend one back with a dribble kick that almost succeeded. One behind. On the bounce, taken by Fisher. Trots out of the defensive 50. And Snyder in his sights, and he takes the mark, Adam Snyder. 
Tigers, I don't think he'd be all that thrilled with their last quarter so far. That's how close he got here. Ellis was getting into the right spot. And that's well guided for Longer. So they've got it to centre half back. Yeah, and as much as the Tigers want to bang on the goals and, you know, ramp up a big score, they've got to work on their defensive structures. They're going to play some really good teams should they get to September. So, oh, wow. Trent Cochin off the ball. Trent, there's no need to get him high. I understand that. Still 50 metres. Tommy Curran. It's a little coat hanger. That's the frustration. He hasn't had an enormous day, Trent Cotton. He's had the 20 possessions, kicking at just 43%. There's a couple of their midfielders been down. Ellis is the other one who's had a huge year. Just the 15. Just the 15. Well, we're now seeing a couple of mistakes creeping in from senior players in this last quarter. We had the Lydio bad handball. That was a uh, lack of discipline for the skipper. Rewald's got his second through a lack of discipline on the part of Trent Cotchin. 31 points is the margin. After what happened to Brett Harvey last week, you think the, uh, the Stars have, know that they've got to be careful? Yeah. Well, especially Richmond, when you consider the problems they've had as far as discipline has been concerned. Yeah, and you wouldn't even worry about the finals. They need their best team next week to get the yeah. job done against the Swans. So, at one stage, leading by 50 points, it has now been cut back to 31. <laughs> Percentage, however, not really playing a part as far as the Tigers are concerned in their quest for the finals race. They've just got to keep winning, as we've said. On a tackle, going the way of guess who? Morris again. Gets around Montagna with ease, then gets underneath a high drop punt. Fisher from behind leaves it for his teammate in Dexter, who takes the mark. Still light rain falling here at the MCG, as predicted. Dempster goes wide to the outer side, too wide. And Montagna takes the mark over the line. So it's going to give Miles again an opportunity to spear it in towards the pocket. Put a bit of pressure on Gordon, who was outnumbered. And eventually it's Delidio who has hastened over the line. A lot of work to do on their foot skills, the Saints. Each summer to get it up to the level that they need to to be competitive against the good sides. 47,188 here in attendance today, so I think they'd be pretty pleased with that. A lot of Tiger fans just getting a sniff of September and a lot of publicity in the media about the comeback, about playing finals. Financially, it's probably saved them a lot of money at My the back word. end of the year because their crowds had started to dwindle and also for their membership next year. No question of that, Hutto. Rewalt sees it over the line. Uh, not a lot of joy for the Saints fans. Sitting in the rain. That is staunch support, mm, though. That is brilliant is. to see. Yep. You're, you're sitting on the bottom of the ladder. You're, uh, you're not really in the contest at all. It's... Sunday twilight, it's cold, it's wet, and there you are supporting your team. That yep. is, hats off to those people. Indeed. Miles tries to get out the back door to Grigg. He's successful. Grigg just tries to spear it through. He almost got through. So Conker off the ground. But uh, away to the right and no addition to the score. So this game ambling towards an inevitable end. 16 and a half minutes gone in this final turn, just under 10 remaining. Maritz and the hustle and bustle gets it down. Foley tries to hook it back. Tiger fans urging on. They love another goal here. Edwards flicked it out the back. Lydio. Foley shoveled it further for Grigg. Now Alice, they're outside the 50. High run for Pennant. <laughs> Everyone can have a run and a jump. And someone has dragged it down, and that someone is Brett Delidio. He's been a significant player uh, inside that forward 50, not just tonight, but this would appear to be the best spot for him if the Tigers are going to be a top four aspirant next season. Although he's almost he's playing a lot of the role that Dustin Martin's been yep. playing when he's been available. So they do, they, do they play them both down there, Jim? I think they do, Jason. I think one just plays uh, a bit deeper than the other and they can interchange. The wrong 
side of the post. So he doesn't add to his two goals. I mean, one of the great de uh, debating points early in the season was the one natured forward line structure with Nick Rewald and uh, Damien Hardwick with his odds with, was at odds with a number of critics saying that you've got to put him in full four. Well, it, th the best way of making it multidimensional is put more talent down there. And they've done that with Dustin Martin and now Delidio, and I think it's going to work. Ross taking it from Nunes and going in towards the middle. Hayes is at the back, but there's been a whistle and there's a free kick going the way of the Tigers. It was an aggressive kick into the corridor, but the trouble is Luke Delaney had his back to the footy. He wasn't looking, he didn't realise it was meant for him. Pettit, but it's going to come back. Even still, it was a poor decision from Ricky Pettit. It was intercepted. It's just no real win in that sort of kick. He kicked a goal in the third quarter, Pettit, so he switches play. From the right, he goes to the left, and he finds Rance, who's got the run of Hurley, but he can't quite trap it initially, and then he gets caught. Two of them have got him covered. Oh, he's lucky he's got it front on contact. Very, very lucky to get the free kick. Basher, but he's had a good day. Disposal number 28 coming up. The most on the ground to Pettit. So he switches play once again. Every player in one half of the ground at the moment. This is 27 for Chaplin. Yep, he's been busy right from the oh, word go. So the Tigers looking to try and stretch their lead. Go up towards Rewalt territory once again. Straight up and down. Pushed dangerously towards the scoring zone for the Tigers. Ross in all sorts of bother. Montagna backs pedal, then takes it back again. Goes back to Ross. Finally, they're out of trouble for the moment. Ross has a little bit of time. Goes onto the left foot, and he wants the boundary line, but he's not going to find it. Kept in by Bachelor only momentarily as Grigg goes to ground. And we've got to throw in. How do you think Damien Hardwick, Jason, would be assessing this day? Oh, I think they got the job done. That would be about it. It's been workmanlike. I think they... Uh had things a little too easy along as we see Sam Gilbert limping off, which is another concern for the Saints, but they had things a little too easy to start the game. I think they then weren't prepared to do the, the hard yards they needed to do, allowed St Kilda back into the contest. They then worked hard enough to put them away again in that third term and pretty much been cruise control in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Sam Gilbert's had a, a wretched year. Came back some six weeks ago. And he's just played the five games. To see the totally frustrated and disappointed because he's such an important player for that side. Marriage a short little chip is okay to Ellis. He will go back. He's been dominant in the past six or seven weeks, but not so much today. I just wonder if that means it's a serious injury to Sam Gill, but let's hope not. Yeah. I don't think he's going to get the mouth guard back, is he? No. So probably doesn't want it for next week. Ellis from 50. 15 seconds, Brennan. Has a long run. Steady run. Good looking kick. Okay. And Ellis has done the job. He's kicked his first for the day. Had 36 disposals when these sides met in round 15. Not quite as busy today, but he's got two goals to his name. Well, he's paying the price, Jason, for his form. Like all midfielders, you get a few weeks at the top where you're getting your 30, your 35s, and then all of a sudden the real challenge comes and a bloke like Clint Jones uh, solders up the sides and said, OK, we'll see how you go with me uh, piggy backing you around. And life becomes a bit more difficult to get up the uh, 30 possessions. And that's the great challenge for all mid mids. Sam Gill has played the six games. He had a serious long-term foot injury. Let's hope it's not that that's been aggravated. Well, it's ice on the foot that they're applying. Yeah, we're going to Cochin. And the rain gets a little stronger. The skipper gets it back again. Goes searching for teammates, finds Grimes. Careful use of the ball, but effective use of the ball by the Tigers. On the way out, Lennon. Really tumbling down now. <laughs> she was half off and... He got away with it. Rance. Pretty much all the Saints are ahead of him. Gets himself into a bit of trouble. Has to kick it down the line. It's going to be hard to mark that. Hooley runs headlong into trouble. He 
Everyone wants to dive on. Get a slip and slide. Not a lot going on under no, there, is there? Feel Couldn't believe it was 20 degrees here like yeah. yesterday. Feel free to make any comments you'd like, Jason. <laughs> the Tigers are in the eight, Hutto. It's theirs to lose. Ball back to the wing. Next. Speed of movement. That's the secret to their success. Chaplin. Cochin calling for it in the pocket, but he's going wide at Ellis. They've really controlled the footy to the Tigers. They've had a lot more of the ball. They've had an, uh, 118 more possessions than the Saints, but it's only translated into an extra eight inside 50s. 400 they've just gone past in total disposals. To 283. Yeah, this yeah, is this, was it over the boundary line? No. He said, no, we're done. He wasn't going anywhere. No. Jack Revolt's kicked middle. six goals for the Tigers. This one opens up for Revolt and the Saints. They've got one extra sweeping defender, and that's in the back. Apparently not. Yeah. Four minutes remaining. So, an interesting opening for young Spencer White. He's kicked a couple of goals, wearing a famous number down there at Moorabbin from the throw-in. And it's going to be interesting to watch his career unfold. Longer. Popped a high one early today as Foley soccer's off the ground. He'll say that was purely intentional. Marriage goes on quickly. Tough ask now for Cochin, and that will frustrate him. Under four minutes remaining. Rain persisting. That's a great kick. A really good kick. He goes into the middle. Oh, should score here. Now, what can they do? Well, it, towards uh, half forward. White again. Couldn't take the chest mark. Weller is there. Tried to fend off. Was not successful. Curran goes over the top. White gets another opportunity for number three. And he's kicked it. Three goals in your first game has got to be a big pass mark. Lots of potential, lots of excitement, I think, surrounding this young kid coming in. And Saints fans will be thrilled that he's got three. What he's shown us tonight is he's a really uh, accurate kick in front of goal. He's got uh, heaps of potential. And if he can add uh, the work rate that his skipper have, has displayed for over a decade, he's going to be a genuine star of the game. He's very comfortable on the left peg, isn't he? Just yep. makes it look easy. They had a three on two. It wasn't quite the right kick coming in. It should have actually gone to Mavuela, who was on his own, but they kicked it to a contest, but then had the numbers. Margin 32 then, the MCG. Armitage hacks it forward. Murdoch's going to have plenty of Tigers for company there. Baron Ray, just the meterage gain. And again. And inside the 50. So all eyes are going to be on ANZ Stadium next week. Great yep. climax to the season. It is. It's well. It's just what the AFL have been trying to achieve, and it, evenness to the competition. But uh, to get it this deep into the home and away is a major be, bonus. Might be plenty of the Tiger faithful that make that trip as well. Yeah. Long Jerry. trip. <laughs> yep. Announcement in Sydney today that they're going to spend uh, whatever it takes to put a roof over that stadium in the next year or two. Snyder towards full forward. Uh, it's going to have a massive viewing audience. There'll be plenty of Tigers that make the journey, but if not, then make sure you tune to Fox Footy to watch all the action. Richmond leading by 32 points. 15 8 98 to 9 12 66. Longer taps it. They charge from all angles. Here's Revolt. Feeds it back. Ray to the square. Grimes stumps it away. Curran trying hard. Chaplin. Curran brilliantly emerged out of the well, pack. Good kick. And was able to put it under the chest of a teammate. And that was the most important thing. And Murdoch to go back and try and put it through. It's a really good kick from Tom Curran. He was about to have the snap and then realised he had a loose player there and just chipped it around the corner. Should make a certainty of it now. It would have been a very difficult snap from where he was. Straight through the middle, she sails. So the Saints have battled on, considering that Richmond 
Led six goals to two at quarter time and look as they made a real fast break at the start of the day. Uh, it's been a really uh, battling competitive effort by the Saints. Yes, he's going to, uh, he's got the potential to be a real gun, this kid. Lots of wraps on him down at uh, Linton Street. From old St Kilda supporters. Al <laughs> <laughs> Evan. And at Seaford as well. Keep driving down the peninsula. Uh, we're with you, G, don't worry. He becomes the seventh goal kicker for the Saints this afternoon. And the one concern, I think, for the Tigers, they just haven't been able to really put them away after leading by 50 points. And credit to the young Saints. Throw in Billing, Dunstan, yeah. Templeton, Akers. All, all injured. Dead right. Griffith. A long way from home. Short pass is on. Miles was a target. Couldn't take it cleanly. So the Saints may get another opportunity to go deep into their attacking zone. White is a target. Oh, and he couldn't take it on the chest. He recovers, however, and he gets the hand pass away. Weller's there. Just tries to push it back. It goes over the line, however. And we've got a throw in. Yes, you get those players back, Jared. You have another big pre-season and hopefully come through it relatively unscathed. You start again with a blank sheet. Yeah, the key is uh, bringing them all through together. That would appear to be, if you're going to build from the bottom, the formula for success. You've got to accumulate half a dozen, dozen young kids and get them in an age bracket uh, with not too much separation, one to three years, and then just hopefully when you do rise, you've got enough to take you all the way. Over 47,000 here today and probably over 47,000 seagulls at the moment too. Over the ground as Hooley gets ripped to the ground. The footy spills free. Tigers have still got the numbers, however. Lennon was screaming for it, but they go longer right across the ground. And they're out of strife inside the final minute of play. There's a well-placed ball into the middle too. And there's still some options for Alice. Can he strongly go through the air? Well, he went strongly, but Dempster is so good in the air. And uh, he was able to use that to affect Revolt. We're down to the last 30 seconds now. So the Saints will have one last opportunity to try and get a late goal Go and win this final him. turn. Maybe set it up for Lenny. Just to give him one last sniff on the G. Where is he, Jared? He's in front. In the area. 20 metres away. And he's gone over Lenny. He's ignored that. Well, he wants him to run on its <laughs> main uh, rover. <laughs> Morris. I think Lenny's just about had enough. Yep. <laughs> Grimes. And the footy is with Griffiths. Eight wins in a row for the Tigers. And for the first time, Richmond is in the eight. And now it is up to the Tigers and the Tigers alone. And the good thing is, if they make it from here, they will deserve it. Richmond win by 26 points at the MCG. Damien Hartley. Almost a look of indifference. That's eight in a row for the Tigers, but he knows this was probably as uh, least impressive as any of those eight victories. This was the one that I think everyone knew was going to happen. It was just a matter of how it was going to happen, but the big one comes next week. Yeah, but to be fair to Richmond, they got the job done. They've had a huge psychological uh, up for so many weeks in a row now. You've got to, uh, at some stage, if you get away to a six-goal break, you've got to have a bit of a uh, mental letdown. But they've done it, and they've got there, and they get their opportunity next week. Let's get down to Cameron Mooney. Thanks, Hano. Jack, unbelievable turnaround for this football club a couple of eight weeks ago. Everyone was coming after you guys, and here you are in the eight. Ah, uh, yeah, look, um, I mean, we put a lot of hard work inside those four walls. It's a lot of media noise outside, mate, about football club. Obviously, we're a big club and we, we weren't going as well as what we wanted to, but uh, it's funny the sounds. We, we sort of still had confidence in the way we we're going and still had confidence in the path we were treading, and the winds have come off the back of some momentum, mate. Some boys getting, uh, getting their hands on the ball and playing a little bit better, and uh, yeah, some good performances. Speaking about playing better, you guys at the first quarter just came out and blew them just out of the park and just, just held on to it then after that. Yeah, we played a little bit patchy today, I reckon. We played some good footy and we played some poor footy as well, so I will address that. Um, it's been, a, it's been a, a long eight weeks. Uh, obviously, we've, we've won eight in a row, but it takes us toll, but we're, um, 
Really looking forward to getting up and playing uh, the Swans. Top of the ladder next week, mate, at ANZ. Um, I mean, it's just exciting that we're in the eight and we're a chance of maybe playing in September. What about yourself, Jack? I mean, it's the fifth time now you've kicked over 50 goals in your career in a, in a season. So, yourself, you must be just proud of the way you just play in your footy. Oh, look, we well, haven't had the greatest season this year, mate. Um, but converted tonight. Um, look, I'll just try to stand up when I need to. And put a big cheerful Lenny there. So, uh, <laughs> no, um, yeah, so I'll just try and stand up, mate, when, when the club needs me. No, it's been another great year, mate. Don't put yourself down. When I kicked 50 goals this season. I thought I was like, unbelievable. You were just having a bad year. So, well done, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. And well done to the Richmond Footy Club to form that guard of honour for Lenny Hayes. Uh, he would be embarrassed about it, I'm sure. He's a very humble champion. And spare a moment a thought for Gilbert because I reckon that's why he showed the frustration that he showed. He knows that he's got the same ankle problems quite possibly that he's had before and that's going to mean a long stint of repatriation. But the Tigers now eight in a row and in the eight. So we'll stay with them. Uh, Moons, who have you got this time? I've oh, been out here with uh, club legend Chrissy Newman and 21 possessions and they, they dragged you, mate. What is going on? Oh, I'm not sure. I think they had to uh, try and rest the old legs and, um, yeah, look, it was just sort of precautionary sort of thing and, um, yeah, look forward to the challenge next week. Well, 250 next week must be very exciting for you. Yeah, oh, it's exciting, but we've got uh, bigger fish to fry next week. Obviously, we're, we're playing for a spot in the finals now, so, um, you know, it's a really big challenge to go over there and uh, there and play Sydney and, um, yeah, we just need to freshen up during the week and, and give it our best crack. Eight in a row for you guys, and you've been at the club a long time. Is this the best you've seen this club going? Um, oh, look, it's, it's sort of hard to tell. I think it, the thing is that we've shown a lot of resilience to come back from where we, um, where we were at the start of the season. So I'm just wrapped that the boys have been able to rally together and get ourselves in a, in a position where we can really challenge. You know how hard Sydney is going to be? Can you guys do it? Oh, of course, mate. We just, um, you know, we're just going to do the things that we can control, and we feel that we're playing pretty good footy at the moment. So, um, yeah, we very much look forward to the challenge. It's all in your destiny, mate. Good luck. Cheers, mate. Well, Chris Newman, wouldn't everyone be delighted if he could play another final series? The Tigers fans, they've turned out despite the weather. 47,000 people, and they're in the eight tonight. Edinburgh coming up to look at all the highlights from the round and also what's ahead. Stay with us, the Tigers home by 26 points.